Great, and welcome back for another Meeting the Artist Drawing live stream with my buddy Liam. And today we have uh, Daryl Sawaski and Bob Little, the creators of The Fatal Charades. Hey, guys. hey, hey. What's going on? Thanks for having us. Oh, thanks yeah, for coming by, guys. Always fun to in chat. The, in the immortal words of Eddie Murphy, I am very happy to be here. <laughs> yeah. yeah that. I mean it's a great way to hang out too right just I get to draw and talk nerd it up yeah we end up yeah, backstage too. talking before we even spark it up and then we're like do we go live <laughs> <laughs> two hours later I don't my cat out. <laughs> yeah. no it wasn't that long today but no it's uh Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at, uh, see what Bob's been working on and, uh, yeah, just kind of hang out and have some conversation and let the, uh, the guys explain what the project that they were working, <clears throat> sorry, um, Sweet. explain the project they're working on and, uh, yeah, what they, you know, just fill us in as to what's going on. And... Most excellent. Cool. Sounds cool. Good to me. Hey, Daryl, you want to get the uh, the concept of Fatal Charades? And I'll talk yeah, a little bit sure. about the art. Yeah, if people want to dive in. Um, it's uh, high fantasy, dark fantasy, I guess you could say, in terms of genre. Um, we don't give you a whole lot of explanation of why the world is the way that it is uh, right away. That's kind of something that's dropped in little hints here and there. Um, I want I want there to be a sense of depth um, to the world that the characters inhabit, and some mysteries for people to uh, uncover as it unfolds. Um, essentially, it it drops you right in the middle. Our story drops you right in the middle of a palace coup that's taking place, and the royal family is being deposed, and our heroine uh, Dacia Dacia. Um, you can kind of pronounce it either way, I guess. At least historically, it's a place uh, that existed in Roman times. Uh, that's where the name came from. Um, but um, she uh, she is sort of the last remaining member of this royal family that was, you know, sort of just in an unjust uh, world, largely a world that sprang from a lot of injustice. And finally, things were starting to look up a little bit. And then, um, you know, uh, something happens and things go awry. So she's on a sort of journey of self-discovery, of uh, reclaiming her throne. And a lot of our cooler characters are... Um, her little band of heroes that travel with her. Uh, they were the former Royal Guard. Uh, there's a lot of history to those guys as well. Um, so when we meet them, they all know each other very well. Um, you know, one of the things that's important for me is building uh, that there's a sense of rapport be between the characters, that they that you get that depth, that they've known each other for so long, right? That takes a little bit of finessing. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that kind of sums it uh, sums it up. It's a world of high magic, uh, dragons, swords, sorcery, all that kind of stuff. If if you're into any of that, some of my biggest inspirations for the writing side come from uh, like George R. R. Martin for A Song of Ice and Fire, um, Stephen Erickson for the Malazan Book of the Fallen, uh, Glenn Cooper for the Black Company. These are all like dark fantasy tales that anybody who is into the genre would probably already know. So um, if you haven't checked those out, check them out. They're great books. Um, but uh, otherwise, I think I've covered the story side of it. Bob, if you want to take it from there. Cool. Um, yeah, so I guess what I'll be working on right now, just I think it's page 9 or 10. I can't remember, actually. But um, we talked about the art direction and decided to stick with black and white since it's our first comic and just makes financial sense and tackling colors too. And Chad, maybe you could attest to this too, because you just did your first comic with color. It's like, it's an extra thing to learn, right? So Daryl and I are just starting this out and trying our hands at it. 
so yeah, we decided to stick with black and white and um, yeah, I'm just running with Daryl's story. It's like, it's kind of cool to like take what Daryl's doing and try to imagine it visually. And I think my influences would be similar, like, except like art wise, I know I've talked to you guys before about it, but I'm a huge Mike McNola fan. Um, but I also talked to Daryl earlier about like, he has this idea of like using these, like, I don't know what you're calling them, Daryl, like hybrids, like characters that are like, you know, like a wolf man or I don't know, like a bunny man. But anyway, it kind of reminded me of Beatrix Potter. Yeah, yeah, more or less. Uh, the, yeah. So, like, yeah, I, I, I mean, that's a good short way to refer to them. Like, in the yeah. lore wise, we call them. Hmm? You were cutting out there. Yep. Anyway, um, I was just talking about the influences there. So, like, I thought, oh, I kind of want to go for like a realistic approach, like just kind of go with yeah, Daryl's unapologetic totally. fantasy vibes going on. And uh, it just, I was saying like, I want to go for like kind of Mike McNola thing and like almost like a Beatrix Potter kind of thing. Just because like as a parent now reading Beatrix Potter to my kids, it just like, it just felt serendipitous. It's like, oh, this is great. There's all these characters that like are creatures that are portrayed as like being humanoid. And I don't know, just, it felt right. So um, I don't know what else to say about art style. I think um, the black and white lend, lends a lot to the moodiness of the story in this uh, iteration of it. I mean, I would love to see, like I, I think I was saying to the guys last night, some of the, the magic stuff and uh, like that come to life with color. Um, just because I think there's a lot of room for it to shine in that circumstance. But I mean, given our limited resources and stuff, I love the way that the black and white has turned out stylistically. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like I'm, I'm for sure happy with it too. We did talk before about maybe experimenting with color, but it just didn't really make sense. Yeah. For yeah. Another reason, yeah. Right? But if we were to yeah. do it again, like a second issue, probably I could see in color for sure. Yeah, yeah, that I, would be. Sorry, Daryl. No, go ahead. I'm done. I I haven't even read the story yet because I want to see it in its entirety. I've I think I've already told you guys this that I want to wait until the comic's done. I want to see it all completely done up, lettered, and everything. That's how I want to take it in. Yeah, <laughs> and honestly, like me seeing bits of it like that with like that dialogue, you know, it's not. 100% yet but a little bit of the lettering that's been done I'm like yeah like I just I, I love seeing it all in that almost final form like it's very close so yeah, yeah. It's sweet it's fun to see come together for sure it gives it the final kisses and plus puts that kind of you know that cherry on the top yeah mm -hmm. exactly that yep. finishing touch but the next step is to see it actually you know follow through to fruition and then actually have the first printed copy in your hand and, and grab it. Yeah, away. for sure. I can't wait for that. It's, it's going to happen sooner than later. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's really cool to see in print, like even the poster that you printed off Chad, like it's really rewarding just to see it, like to hold it in your hands, you know? Yeah. Rather than totally. just like a digital. Image. <laughs> yeah. I have it above my, uh, my computer upstairs. <clears throat> nice. I went with a soft blue light in the background, so I would stand out. You know, I would look there you go. warmer You're instead of your uh, your sexy red light you had yesterday. Yeah, in which you were trying to uh, lure Kickstarter. Uh, <laughs> had too many strippers swinging around the bowl out there. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the knocking was. Yeah. <laughs> That's what that was last night. Yeah. No, we have a Christmas. Chad has no children. His <laughs> children are the many ladies dancing outside the door. We have this Christmas ornament that when the the heat turns on, it knocks against the window. So <laughs> it catches me like looking over, going, "Who's the window?" My um, 
My mom has that leg from Christmas Story in her front window. <laughs> the the leg lamp thing. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> I think the uh, the book's looking great. Like I haven't seen a lot of uh, pages. It's only been fed to me in little little portions, but I'm getting really excited to see this book uh, come to light and getting excited to see the the Kickstarter starting to get assembled and and doing things like that as well. So yeah, for sure, getting that side built of it will be awesome as well. Just because, you know, having a finished book isn't enough. We still got to try to try to get some people to open it up and read it. Well, I don't think you're going to have much difficulty at all because, you know, the from what we can see, like, I don't know the writing side of it, but I'm I I know from what I've seen from Daryl and stuff that the writing is, you know, spot on. So which is great. I have Bob to carry me through as well. (laughs) So team effort. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Even if even if people are like, meh, the writing is subpar, but the art is amazing. It's like <laughs> that beanbag thing, right? You get, <laughs> we're tied off like three-legged race, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's a fun oh, project. I, yeah, it is fun. Yeah. Sorry, I'm really parched from eating dinner, man. I made hamburgers and I salted them up pretty good, and I'm like, <laughs> What page are we working on right now here, Bob? I think it was either nine or ten. So um, if anyone's wondering, like it's 26 pages in total. So they're all penciled. It's got all of them done. And yeah, right now is the the latest one. So yeah, about page nine or ten, the inking process. I think we're getting some drawing from Liam too. Oh, really? Why not? Why not? Yeah. And just oh, look at that. This is our second time on today. We did oh, like yeah? a warm up live stream, like a gesture drawing live stream. Oh, oh nice. And uh, yeah, if anybody's interested in checking out the Fatal Charades, you can see the Instagram tag that links you to the Fatal Charades. Um, not to mention, yep. uh, we'll be printing it through Tardigrade Press. So the Kickstarter. I'm sure with the way things are going that it's going to happen within the next, uh, I would, I would say at least the next three months. So. Yeah. Yeah. Me and Bob were talking about a a, a loose two month kind of a feel for it, you know, just to give everybody time to finish it off, get the finishing touches in there. And in case there's anything that needs to be ironed out, we have that space, but um, yeah. Assembling the Kickstarter is pretty pretty simple work, right? It's not uh, overly exertive. Um, yeah. Well, we can it, use some of the imagery from the inked pages to kind of create the same um, effect you used for Sasquatch Vikings with the different package layouts and stuff. I, th- I thought you did a great job with that. So I think if we did something along those lines, it would keep the moody effect of the Fatal Charades, you know, and it's sort of branding, I guess you could say. And then for sure, get that same uh, cool look. Yeah, yeah, I'm uh, kind of testing it out where I have different ideas for future Kickstarters where um, I want to do like an elongated uh, panel that you can put it in as one image. Oh, and, I see uh, what you're saying you can really have a flow to it. Like I've seen in some other Kickstarters that it has like a very, it's just neat. Like just going into Kickstarter and seeing what other people are doing and stuff. And Oh, for sure. Yeah. Boring and playing around with that. And uh, we're we're definitely starting to find our footing with how we're going to present projects to people as well. So. Right. And that, uh, you know, we're all sharpening our skills for that too, as we go. But um I think it's been getting better and better. I mean, the upward trend should continue, hopefully. Well, for sure. We keep on having more and more artists that, that seem to be uh, wanting to join or contribute in, in any way or other ways as well, which is great because we're building a community. And yes, uh, sir. everything is definitely moving forward. So, you know, we're going to win some. We might uh, lose some, but we'll, we'll just take it as... Uh, Take it as it comes, each moment at a time. Yeah, Let's see yeah that's happens. life. Right? 
for sure. <laughs> Did you guys see that uh, Krill released another drawing for the Sasquatch thing today? No. Mm -hmm. What did, did you he do? That, did you, Bob? Oh, wait a minute. Yes, I did. Yeah, it looked like a cover. Yeah, it did look like a cover. So I, I tried to contact him today because um, what I was asking or what I wanted to ask him is if I could actually use it because I'd like to use it in a special variant issue uh, that I would like to release with an actual interior poster that's actually stapled into the center of the book. Like it's an actual printed page. Um, you know, cause they used to do that a lot was print a poster in the, inside of a comic, you know, and everybody's like, Oh, do I pull it out? Don't I pull it out? But then yeah. like a special rare variant that we, if, if that's the case, if he, he's good with that by Friday, we can release a specialty tier, uh, with oh, that'd be cool. quantity available to people that want to purchase it. Right on. Nice. Yeah. So. Yeah, I thought as I saw it, I was like, oh, Chad needs to color that. That would be really cool. <laughs> yeah, let's uh, – here, I can pop it open and take a look. Um, yeah, I haven't seen it. Uh, and he also started another uh, another page as well. You guys see that? Um, I don't. started one under his own name. Oh, nice. Uh, I'll have okay. to, like, on Instagram or whatever? Yeah. Oops. Oh, cool. How do, how do I enlarge this? Why did it enlarge on the other but not here? Hmm. What's this little face thing? Oh, he's got it clicked and it attached to Tardigrade Press. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah. All right. Here, I'm just going to... Add this to the stream for a quick sec, guys. But here it is here. Oh, oh nice. Yeah, it looks sweet. Yeah, and I think it would be, it would make like for a really cool internal poster, right? For sure. So, uh, and then you could, you could very easily create a, a comic variant, right? So. And it's in yep, his best definitely. interest to, uh, in retrospect, to contribute to the uh, the Kickstarter because anything that goes above and beyond, there will be royalties in it for him, right? So, yeah, because he's he's already been compensated for his work and and that, so uh, like yeah. I'm willing to contribute more if I can, but I'm on such a fixed budget right now. Oh, for sure. <laughs> yep. But, uh, yeah, I mean, well, we're we're a friggin' company of one person, right? That's you know, with a community that's you know a good community around it, but you know we can only do so much right now. <clears throat> oh, it's working out. Everybody's working away, doing their own thing, and it's all coming together, right? So, like yeah. Liam's working on his comic. Yeah, I'm excited and, about this year. <laughs> Daryl's mastering his his comic writing abilities. Bob's just, uh, you know, rewriting the master class of black and white. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, I think it's. Yeah, uh, I've got a couple things on the go. No, it's, uh, it's pretty wicked. I just sent Liam uh, a bunch of the scripts that I wrote. <laughs> so much fun. I read uh, a bunch of the script from Sasquatch Vikings and uh, just the intro alone was amazing. Uh, I, I was very happy with the way you had outlined the world kind of very succinctly. Uh, you went into some of the characters as well. I was like, dude, there's, there's a character. Can, can I say any of the details? No, I'll, I'll keep it secret. It's okay. I, I won't, I won't do any reveals, but I, I was very happy with the choice of characters and what you did with them. It was all right. It is good. It is very good. He's very cool. I don't. I don't know if in the first issue it quite unwinds the way that it should. Uh, I think the only way that we could have got what we needed to in that first book was to extend it to like a thirty-six page book, right? So, and uh, that would be sizable. Yeah, for sure. But That's, uh, uh, you, you you can do that when it's a graphic novel after the first one is done. How's that? Yeah, you know, it's probably more approachable. <laughs> We definitely uh, left it on a hook there, you know, right at, <laughs> right at the very end. 
So things were drawn out. Oh, Alan uh, Moda just joined the. Uh, it goes, dang! You guys are streaming at the same time as David Finch. <laughs> oh no, that's right. It's Monday night. <laughs> oh, we're competing against David Finch. That's not yeah. good. No, yeah, not good. good at at David <laughs> Finch watching us, right, Alan? <laughs> no. That's yeah, yeah. a good point. Didn't think of that. <laughs> I, I thought at the same time I saw. It pop up in my feed. I'm like, oh, this isn't going to be good for ratings. Everybody's over there. But thanks for we'll that. We'll do it again sometime. <laughs> yeah, Monday nights. I, I'm all screwed up because of the holidays, right? Yeah, same here. I don't. Well, I don't know which day it is most days anyway, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> You're just cracking that out, Liam. You're. Your Android, mm -hmm. that's the Android for your book, or are you just drawing? Yeah, it exactly. His name is Tempo, Tempo, and I'm still trying to work out his character, like how his posture and his form, you know, is going to display his character and his function. That's, uh, he, I know he's tall and lanky, and he's kind of Star Wars ish, but uh, I have to, I want to depart from that a little bit more. I just got to draw him plenty of times, develop his own character, and I think it'll happen just kind of naturally. Yeah. So I'm going to be drawing a lot of robots in the next couple of weeks. That's fun. <laughs> it's a good I time. <laughs> hey, in the that um, figurosity, they they actually have like a robot in there. Oh yeah, just yeah. as a but it kind of looks like the robot from um, what's that one book, Lost in Space, or the you know yeah. With, well, they all kind of like have their own thing. Like this is. I'm not sure what this is from, but the, I have a whole bunch of different kinds of androids and stuff off of Pinterest details. This is some kind of like, I think that's one of the robots from Rogue One. Oh, cool. And this looks like it's from Chappie or something. <laughs> yeah, there's a Star Wars robot. But anyway, lot, lots of reference. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you got to combine the different reference images, right? Oh yeah. You got to see what's happening, you know, so you don't completely depart from people's like what they know, but you want to have something completely your own in there. Also, you don't want to be derivative. I, I see so many people not doing anything new with their designs. just kind of rehashing other people's ideas. Yeah. And it, it's a safe bet. I just, I can't do that. It just <laughs> it goes against my religion. Yeah, I think there are some people who sort of just decide that that's their thing and they just they run with it. Yeah. And you know what? Too, sometimes things can get so driven into your psyche as well that when you go to draw something, it ends up looking like something that you may not even know that you're subconsciously doing it. It just happens, right? Yeah. So. Yep. Yeah, I think that happens with all art, probably. Like any person creating art has the, you that. You can't totally habit. go on your own. You're always going to be drawing from some kind of influence, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, um, well, we got a thumbs up. Yeah. Another <laughs> thumbs up. <laughs> if we can get to 10 thumbs up tonight, <laughs> let's beat our old record. <laughs> That'd be so cool. My a lot of those thumbs up were our own thumbs up, on, sadly, but still, I, I'm okay with that. It's okay, shameless promotion. You got to go. do what you got to do in the early days, right? Exactly. Yeah, I snuck over to one of my accounts and then gave two thumbs up, and Liam's like, "Yeah, <laughs> you are the man." <laughs> Meanwhile, it's like, "Yeah, Chad, you're the man. You are." <laughs> Way to go, yeah, bro. anybody who hovers over can see it, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> and anybody who drops in or even decides to take a sneak peek, just give us a thumbs up. Shows us that you were here. No, we, yeah, we appreciate really it and love you for it. So encouraging. Oh, it's all right. Itchy eye. Ugh. I guess I could have switched over to a drawing tablet before I decided to rub my eye. <clears throat> At least you don't have hot sauce on your hand. That's right. Well, normally I, got, I always got sriracha on my hands, so. Sriracha. I did, I did crush a couple matter. chip nuts. That's probably why my mouth was really dry right before the stream. You guys had those, like, Picard uh, barbecue potato-covered peanuts? Mm, so right. good. Chip nuts. Yeah, they're good. Oh, they rock. 
Yesterday, I destroyed myself by eating chocolate-covered pretzels. <laughs> this is the greatest, greatest cheat ever. They're awesome. No, seriously, they're they're evil good. Drawn Jack running up the stairs. Is that who that yep. is? Nice. Yeah, the chase scene. And he ran. <laughs> this is one of the pages that uh, is mostly I did the layout for. Like I took Daryl's script, but this is Daryl Sawatsky layout. Nice. The panels. You remember that, Daryl? Oh, I remember, yeah. That's what I did. We oh, like a series of the vertical, overlap. like running panels, yeah. The overlap staggers neat, so. Yeah, yeah. I tried to have continuity between, like, so the top left here, this, what follows that for this character, Nath, is this. So this is all kind of happening happening at the same time. Like, everything in the top, right, Daryl? Is happening yep. at the same time, if I recall? Yeah. And then everything at the bottom is happening things. at the same time, too. Yeah. So it's divided by the key characters. So Nath here... And Jack. Yeah, it might take people a second to like grasp what the intent there is there. I don't know. I don't know if it was a mistake or not. No, I think it's okay. Like even if you read it, like you could read it a couple ways, but really left to right, okay, here's what's happening with these characters. And then, you know, for the, the bottom part, same deal, right? It's like, oh, okay. And yeah, I think it's and like, yeah. Chase, especially with the dialogue, right? That's what we have to remember. Like before that, it's all set up through your dialogue. Yeah, so, yeah. Exactly, but I, yeah, I do like how you can follow the character right now. That was you, Daryl, wasn't it? <laughs> what did I do? We got a second thumbs up. Oh, <laughs> no, yeah. I can't. I'm on my phone right now, I can't access anything. My daughter is using all the technology in my house. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. Dar Daryl's just using the clay tablet, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, scratching little lines on the oh, yeah, scoring in is like uh, whatever the old uh, technique was to document. <laughs> he's sputtering out. Oh, Woo, he's he's turning into a robot. <laughs> he's doing the. I love the way the internet like messes with people's voices. I know it's annoying and everything, but the sounds that it comes up with are like, I want to sample them and make songs of them. <laughs> jubi, jubi, jop, jop. <laughs> that sounds like a auto auto tuner that's like mid malfunction or something. If you and he just faded out there, it, the auto tuner that you are absolutely. I I think the sounds that we hear now are like they're they're really they're going to be dated. Like we're not going to hear that kind of digitization in the future. Um, so you know the way when you watch no. a movie about the eighties, or they ha they have all these like period cues, like a particular ringtone on a home phone, or whatever little little things like that. Yeah. That you're like, oh yeah, we're in the eighties. They only had cord phones at that point, right? I think it's going to be the same thing with our digital sounds. Things like uh, I think that, like some of the kids' movies, they have movies where the first messenger uh, thing was happening on their computer, and it had the message sound when you would get a, when you would get a message um do you know what i mean that 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 first in, in, internet message program for windows computers nice you remember that oh yeah we used to screw around <laughs> with that all the time man then you could slow it up and speed it up and all this other stuff yeah yeah, yeah i, I think it's all gonna be normal. period period stuff you know <laughs> this was i think this might have even been like Commodore 64 or was it the very first like uh like um oh I'm remembering back because like I remember where the computer was at my buddy's house um and we were constantly screwing around with that but uh Darsar has a question for you Liam oh for me cool Liam what program is that <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's it's the biological program of uh, mama <laughs> mama's mama's program mama's program is that like slow-mo 
from yeah, the he's new doing trailer. it for it. Daryl just keeps on quaking out every time, man. Every time he talks, uh, got some in crappy years. internet over there, man. <laughs> yeah, I would definitely, uh, you know, go, hey, Callie. <laughs> I think my son's downstairs playing Rocket League. So, and uh, nice. my family's sitting there watching the Android box. Oh man. So the Android box, you can get, you can get movies bootleg, right? Yeah. But like a buddy of mine's already seen Spider-Man and he didn't see it in the theaters. So mm -hmm. I, I'm so jealous. Like I, I got to get that. Cause if I go onto my Apple, I have one of those, old apple tv things like i can't even play youtube on it now because they've stopped the updates but I, it still works for like movies and stuff so daryl's totally yeah. frozen <laughs> i'm looking oh really i'm oh, looking yeah. at he hasn't, the, he hasn't moved. he's been sipping that cup of coffee for like three minutes <laughs> reset oh my gosh reset <laughs> oh prior thing that's what i'm i'm looking for his kids are watching some youtube he's only got one. Oh, he's back should we just let him sit in the backstage? He can hear us. <laughs> <laughs> I <laughs> he could hear not us. hear anything. No? You were uh -huh, saying you were internet. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> Man, I had to fight like mad to try to figure out. So I had this crappy internet connection before that was, its uploads like, was ridiculously slow. And then I changed to a different provider. It's quite a bit more expensive, but now my internet is actually different. And it changed the quality of my, like my videos. My videos looked like garbage when they uploaded to YouTube. And when it's, once I changed internet, it changed the quality of the videos too. I didn't know even that was a thing. Yeah, that's crazy. I would never have known that's that. Interesting. Are you gonna name said provider? Uh, yeah, sure. I went from Bell to Rogers. Yeah, okay. I went from Bell to Rogers. So but that's only because Bell didn't have their 5G, whatever. Five, they didn't have it yet in my area. Yeah. And, uh, and Rogers had their cable connection. So once I switched to the cable, I was able to get actually decent bandwidth for my for my uploading. Downloading is fine, but the uploading is where it really counts. That's where you get hit when you're a YouTuber. Yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> We're... Rogers is the only one that can service us here where we are. So I would like I'm to like the it. last Bell user in my neighborhood. Even the guy who like did service technician work here told me to switch. It's <laughs> so trash, bro. <laughs> They're awful. Like they had a monopoly at one point. They don't have it anymore. Yeah. They're the ones responsible for our cell towers. No. So God bless them for that. But uh, other than that, man, mm, no. I, I wonder how good like some of these satellite people. What was that? Say again. Oh, I thought uh, Daryl was saying something, but it faded. He was. <laughs> I don't know what it was. <laughs> Daryl, today you're just going to be called the drunk uncle because every the drunk know, uncle. <laughs> you say something. <laughs> I am sober. It's okay. <laughs> oh, man. But I can play that part. <laughs> no worries, buddy. I'm just having fun. So um, you good. should do a little uh, Kickstarter thing, even though everyone in the stream already knows about it. But you got your, you got your promo for uh, Sasquatch Vikings here, yeah? I am Squatch. Let's take a look at it. Oh, you, oh, it's, oh it's on the thingy. Love yeah, that. it showed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we knew you were on Bell. <laughs> At first, I thought he was leading into something else. <laughs> there we go. We'll just add it here. <laughs> so trash. Ah. <laughs> oh, it's all right. You know, I live in Brantford, and they're all about Bell here, right? <laughs> Very patriotic. <laughs> yeah, I could do that. Yeah. All right, you guys ready? Three, yeah, two, let's one. do it. Woo! 
you know, I was rocking those Ravens just for you, Daryl. Nice. He, you gotta, you gotta give the link, man. Send over, send people over to that Kickstarter. Is it in the description for the video? Uh, gotta let them know yes, how to promote it. It's in the description. The uh, no, it's not. Tardigrade Press is, but you can link directly from Tardigrade Press's homepage directly to the Kickstarter. <laughs> there you go. But there I can stick it in the description after. I don't know how to fandangle that stuff as we go oh we got another russian uh, bot on here oh good times or, or, russian or, bot or, you're the best russian bot no it, they're the best <laughs> no it's warriors. one of mine <laughs> <laughs> i'm always hiring russian bots to do my work. <laughs> that's funny <laughs> liam knows how to block them i don't know what's going on I'm just like, screw you, Russian bot. You know what we should You're do no is, good. Is, is just get my brother, Daryl, and we'll have you, Daryl, and then we'll have Darsar all together. It'll just be a, like a, a live stream of Daryl's. <laughs> <laughs> Discussing Daryl. Yeah, that's right. And Oh, yeah, and you can talk about the movie, Daryl. <laughs> There's a movie, Daryl? I did not know oh, yeah. that. I remember yeah, seeing the data, cover data of that analyzing awesome. robot youth life form. What? How old are you, man? Come on. <laughs> I cannot think of that many cool characters named Daryl in fiction. The only one that comes to mind is the dude from The Walking Dead. Yeah, we could roll in like Otherwise, Daryl. I got nothing. It's truly an unfortunate. Well, name. I mean, she's. <laughs> Says the guy named Bob. <laughs> Thanks. Thank I'm messing. <laughs> I oh, it's all good. A, I'm just I curious. I don't. I don't look the other. I just have a funny feeling. What was that? Uh, I was just. I just had a funny feeling that Daryl Hannah just. She just didn't look the same when she was younger, but I was thinking about somebody else. But let's take a look. How does Daryl Hannah look now? How would she look in the live stream? Daryl Hannah was amazing back in the day. She was amazing. Yeah. Sp like Splash. Here we go. I'm switching on. <laughs> Who is yeah. that? Is that her husband? Is that Caitlyn Jenner? <laughs> oh, man. So Daryl Hannah has, you know, she's still striking. She kind of looks like the chick from, uh, from um, like Stifler's mom. <laughs> Wasn't she in Kill Bill? Was she? Or am I wrong? Didn't tell you. I don't know. I thought so. It looks like her. That looks like Daryl Hannah when she was younger. She was in Sense Eight. Yeah. That's what uh, Darsar said. Oh, saying. okay. Yeah, that was uh, that was like one of the early Netflix dramas. The one of the first ones they like put out themselves, wasn't it? That is something I don't know. We got like a whole bunch of like knowledgeable people here right you got liam and daryl and then darsar and he seems to know everything he's like this. thanks for uh, including me there chad <laughs> you gotta have darsar well, on the screen man <laughs> send that guy an invite i want to meet this well, guy no i don't know about your, well, your how to make your things black and white things, bob you're you're very mysterious to me still bob <laughs> it was daryl hannah in, in that tarantino movie <clears throat> Oh, nice. Yeah, I think you could be right. You, could you be notice right. how I didn't include myself? Well, I'm not really knowledgeable about anything, so. <laughs> <laughs> it was Daryl Hannah and Kill Bill. Nice. It was. Nice. Yeah. She did a good yeah, job. Have, most of the time that we've ever hung around, Bob, it's always been fairly quiet. quiet well, it's because you're both into your art, right? Yeah. Once you get going, it's... You need to get in that green zone. Dungeon crawling. 
Yeah. Oh, if I tried coloring my comic right now, all of my all of my RAM and bandwidth would be put into that, and I'd just be on the live stream. Nice. Hey, we could extend this open to you there, uh, Darsar and uh, Liam. You guys can join our uh, Dr Dungeons and Dragons uh, party. We could Dungeons and Dragons party. Crates. I haven't played Dungeons and Dragons since I was sixteen. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Nice. Yeah, that's, that's the last time we played before we got started again, too. Yeah, we're on the COVID lockdown now. We we have to play online. <laughs> Dude, my yeah. gym is going to close. Yeah, we were getting, getting together once a month, though. Yeah, we were trying the other day, but it didn't pan out. Yeah, it didn't happen. Oh. <laughs> well, it's not, not fun if we can't all get together. and Then we try to play some other dude's guy right <laughs> so yeah, yeah for sure it can happen if it has to but try to avoid it as much as possible did you guys ever play marvel superheroes yes that was no my jam. i've heard things <laughs> that yeah. was my jam oh, i nice. loved making up of course i'd make up my own characters that was the whole thing you know was that and, uh, yeah for sure Nintendo? that would be the over it no scary? it's uh, it's a D, D format game like you play you, there's a person who makes up the campaign makes a map or whatever oh because and... they made a video game of that too right that's what i thought of when you said that yeah because i think they oh, made sure. one oh yeah they made many video games like that. oh there's a grace walker here like you could level yeah, up no, that's uh, too, that's right? also spam oh <laughs> Is that oh? Is it because the the letters are like? I'm pretty sure, yeah. Case and everything else. Yep. Uh, so oh yeah, yeah, the bots are out there, man. Yeah, they must like the blue light. <laughs> <laughs> replace replace strippers outside in the pole to bots. <laughs> Troll bait. <laughs> That's right. Blue light, blue light. Is that one of the characters' names? Look at all those pages yeah. there. Oh, you're oh, just me. jumping from page to page now. You're like a page jumping ninja. Yeah. I like that page. I like the sequential face. I've always liked that. Yeah, that there's a dude named Troll Bait in one of those panels. Yeah, so I brought it up. So, did, do you understand, yep. Errol? Bob? Do you, are you. <laughs> I, I did not hear any of that. It was oh, no. he always mentioned troll baits. Like, oh, that's what he named one of his characters here. <laughs> They're like one of the Star Trek extras, though, aren't they? <laughs> Those yeah, guys that you know are just there to fight and I red shirts. Yeah, yeah. but I, did, I gave them for their imminent demise. <laughs> if that was total Max Adrum all the way. We could get a filter for Daryl. I'll just, you know what? I heard some of that, but he was just talking about how when he named one of his characters Troll Bait, and that's why I brought up that page. That's all. Oh, wicked. I have tons of pages, but I also made duplicates of every page, right? Just in case. Oh, yeah, for sure. I got to do my. Uh weekly backup where i back up the drives and stuff so yeah i'd hate to lose a page mm -hmm. even like, that would be brutal it's all uploaded to one drive too yeah. i think it just sent me an update and like i'm only at like a really small capacity of what i pay for 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 space so but yeah definitely everything needs to be backed up and yeah. backed up and backed up again that would suck to lose. Oh, that'd be, yeah, that would be brutal. Oh, here's um, I'm gonna put the banner for uh, the Sasquatch Viking campaign. There we go. Oh, roll it in the bottom. <laughs> yeah, do that. It kind of That's feels cool. like a news bulletin. Like when it was in red last time, I thought it was like some sort of breaking news yeah. thing. Right? Well, yeah. it is. It is breaking news. Yeah, Our like news. Kind of we control the narrative. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, would be, be funny to fill it with a bunch of trolly nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Oh, like real fake news, like legit fake news. That'd be That's awesome. Right. <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> we should totally do it next time. Or just do constant updates with like the stupidest facts on the bottom. <laughs> or or just say somebody <laughs> like, really famous has died and put it in the bottom of the like thing. Oh it's man, Facebook like, does that, real. eh? You go, I go on to yeah, Facebook like, and there's these like fake clickbait like, things, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just drive you nuts. Yeah, I don't Nicholas know. Cage has died, or, or like consoling Nicholas Cage's family. <laughs> yeah. Nicholas Cage finally got hair plugs. <laughs> I had one, it was Keanu Reeves taken out of the Hall of Fame. Um, or something like that. Like the, it was the same thing. Keanu Reeves <laughs> dies, or like, so yeah, it was like all these stupid things. Like, what? Keanu Reeves is taken out of the Hall of Fame. I need to check that out. And you know, you go oh, there and they just take <laughs> stuff. Yeah. They insert Trojan horses under <clears throat> your computer. No, no thanks. <laughs> no, yeah, thank I hate that shit. Uh, this is looking good, the running up the stairs. How long is it taking you for pages now, Bob? Looks like you're gaining more speed and momentum on these things, too. Um, you can do the color fill with, like, the iPad, man. You just drag the color so over quick. and drop yeah. it. Yeah. Sometimes, it, like, it'll mess up because it's pretty precise. Like, I have to get my own line stick if I want to fill it. Otherwise, it, like, suddenly the whole screen goes black. But it is pretty quick. Selection tool is pretty good for that, too. But Um... I don't know, like, I was doing about one a day, I think. Okay. You know, that's not like working the whole day, but amidst parenting and stuff like that. <clears throat> it's definitely quicker than penciling, that's for sure. Well, I was thinking to Daryl, too, one of the big things that I learned um, after inking, like, the first four or five pages was uh, I had to be more explicit with the penciling. Just like, I thought, oh, I could be a little bit lazier with the penciling and kind of take care of business afterwards with inking. Um, but then it was like, there was so much experiment experimentation with the inking that like, ah, I don't, I'd rather not do that. I think it's easier to experiment with the penciling phase than it is with inking, at least for me anyway. Yeah, it looks great. Like you've definitely, you can see that you've ironed out like, everything and you know exactly you've mapped it out perfectly and know where you're going with it right so yeah it, it makes it a lot quicker like there's a couple things that like the texture here for i don't know if you could see it very well but for the torches here in the wall i had a way different in the pencil phase so that's something where like i had to embellish a lot yeah um see if i could find it here yeah so it was just like kind of Bag, right i noticed that you changed that from yesterday because it yeah more, yeah more, it, more chiseled and it almost looked like a, a uh, ambulance symbol right what was you know? i doing last night uh, that's I, probably I, the one you saw yeah i noticed it written uh or i saw an earlier version where it was more staggery almost like the pencils yeah like that yeah like that and that was direct from the pencils pretty much and it's like oh you know what it's not working so just went back and added more of the brick texture. Are you there, Daryl? I'm here. Guys, oh, hear me okay? Yeah. Hey, we got audio. Nice. Yeah, See, here's I another one. Try that. It like... probably. My daughter's probably watching YouTube and playing some kind of game upstairs. <laughs> She's leaving the internet. It's all about that bandwidth, man. She's probably just, yeah. you know, somewhere else in the house while the TV and the iPad are running. <laughs> <laughs> that wouldn't surprise me, playing with Barbies yeah. or something. That's yeah. right. It's exactly what my kids do. <laughs> yeah. When, when oh, it doesn't room, matter to leave it room. <laughs> I went to the one room and uh, Minecraft was on. I go downstairs, Rocket League's on, and then, you know, the TV's on. And, <laughs> I'm so thankful for this uh, at home learning stuff. It's going to oh. be a blast. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, I bet. Yeah, all of you guys trapped in the house together. <laughs> now, it's easier to make a routine during the day when they're not around, right? To to do oh, stuff totally. and not have any. Well, I disappear in here anyways. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That doesn't exclude you from them doing their thing. <laughs> yeah, my kids are almost at that age where they're starting to like just kind of like side, you know. Okay, it's fine. <laughs> Dad's doing his own thing. We can do our own thing. It's a cool That's thing good. when your parents are distracted. You can get away with stuff. Yeah, I hear my one kid screaming. <laughs> I it was a goose outside or something. He moved, he moved all his gaming stuff to the base. Fun stream? Or... <laughs> oh, that, look, that looks good, Liam. Kids start a, like a pyramid scheme, you know? That's what we're going to do. Dad's not watching. Let's start a pyramid scheme. That's all right. <laughs> I'm gonna call perfume. I'm, uh, that'll be pretty cool, you know. <clears throat> you know Something to be proud and, of, for sure. Yeah. I made $12 million in one week. <laughs> you don't have to put ads on. You're also YouTube. under arrest, Dad. Yeah, we yeah we don't have to make YouTube's on uh, or uh, videos on YouTube. We can steal other people's videos and and promote them. <laughs> Sounds like a great idea. I'm in. Let's do it. And they, you hear that like the ads that are popping up now. You don't need to make your own videos on YouTube, so people are actually taking other people's videos and then putting a new uh, homepage or doing whatever, and then yeah. That's why you want to put watermarks on your oh, videos. Really? Yeah. <clears throat> That's I just saw that watermark feature the other day. I'm going to definitely use it. Just scrubbing content. I did have a watermark. Uh, uh, everything that goes onto my YouTube page gets watermarked with the uh, Lead76 illustration. Oh, sweet. Right on. I don't know about Tardigrade. Uh, I don't use the Tardigrade Press uh, YouTube page very often, so... <clears throat> Must be really nice to hold, draw with an actual pencil, man. It's fantastic. Are you talking about me, the Apple Pencil? Or you mean like real life pencil like oh. Liam? Oh, yeah. Well, real life pencil or the Apple Pencil, man. Because like, that I Apple don't know, man, drawing with these things, like this is not a pencil. <laughs> it's kind of like you're drawing with a, um, a V2 rocket or something. <laughs> <laughs> the the difference between... Sorry. Oh, no, no worries. You can't hit the buttons. Like, just ask Daryl. He was over here the other day trying to sign his name to the uh, signature series for the Kickstarter, and he was hitting the button. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bringing up random screens. Yeah. Yeah, it happens. This one has a double tap. So if I tap it a couple times, it switches to the eraser. Yeah, it looks like... Hey. Um, can I ask you guys opinion of a logo that I'm making for my spin kit comics? Uh, I guess what company brand, whatever. Yeah. Can I spin your screen? I'd love to get your opinion on this. Uh, okay. Share screen. There it is. Share screen. Here, close this. There's my logo. Nice. This is what I'm working on. So I want to bring this silhouette of the kick into the actual logo, maybe thicken this up a little bit so it's like square, right? And I'm thinking there's going to be like an arc, like a like an anime motion arc. So it's more of a spin kick instead of a side kick. So it'll be more circular oh, inside nice. of this. So I'm going to incorporate it. But those yeah. are the different elements I got so far. Cool. It looks cool, man. I like it. Right on, right on. Yeah, yeah. To I think the font matches the, uh, you know, the karate style or whatever we we're calling that. But oh, we were seeing the, the air vibes. Work. <laughs> it's my feedback. I have a collection of all this like comic stuff. Do you guys want to see some of my my favorite like comics uh, that I've like ripped off from from uh, Comicsology? Some like awesome panels of spaceships. Yeah. I'll right, take, take you on a tour of uh, 
a tour. So a lot of this stuff is um, Daniel Warren Johnson, I think is his name. Daniel. Uh, us on a fantastic I think it's, voyage. I think it's Daniel Warren Johnson. Yeah. So his, his spaceships, like I'm sold. This stuff just, just gorgeous. Like, look, look at that, man. If I drew that, I, I'm happy with my life. I've accomplished something. Yeah, that's fantastic. It looks awesome. <laughs> R2D2 <R2D2> showed up. There's another one. Love this one. Crazy. Oh, that's cool. Are those speed lines at the back? Like when the boosters are starting to turn on or something? Uh, yeah, I think so. I think it's like radiation from the engines, right? Nice. He Very is cool. he is just killing it in the in the comic game right now. Ooh. So good. This is his I, I love this one because of the perspective on the sniper rifle. It's great. Yeah, it looks very cool. Right on. And this is like uh this looks like something you'd see out of um Avatar. It's got oh, those, Avatar. Yeah, they have yeah, yeah, got yeah. those uh that that you know the, the gunner ship look, right? Yeah, yeah. From the opening scene. I love this one. This is some great one point perspective. Oh wow. Very cool. He's got that's he's got really cool. Whole, oh man. It'd be interesting to see like what kind how do how are these people drawing some of these? Or is he traditional or is he uh digital or I think from what I understand, this is traditional. Yeah, like that's another great one point. Like, <clears throat> I would call that one point because it's heading more so in one direction opposed to like, I know like you could get two point by the way it yeah. comes across, right? But Oh, it's two point perspective all the way. Actually, I think yeah. it might even be three point because there's a bit of a taper to the top. Is there a taper going up? Slight taper, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, like this is not a horizontal, this is not a vertical line right here. Uh, so yeah, but that's, that's a taste of Daniel Warren Johnson, gentlemen, there you go. Awesome. Very cool. Telling us about that the other day too, is that the book you were mentioning or something totally different? Sorry? Did you mention his book the other day? Is that the same guy? Uh, I don't think so. No, I think that I was probably talking about White Knight, Sean Gordon Murphy's White Knight. Yeah, yeah, because I was talking about Mech. But he, yeah, Daniel Warren Johnson is really good at Mech too. But I don't think he's as good as Sean Gordon Murphy, though, to be honest. Um, I can show you some stuff from White Knight if you like. I got that there too. Yeah, let's see. Like, it. like to see it? Here it goes. <laughs> uh, hold on. Select, select it back into the thing yeah i got some white knight action happening here uh pictures comic book bubble gum so much so much stuff this is like I, i'm i'm just a kid at heart uh let's see you gotta have some white knight here it's a bunch of cool reference some bisley this is just a random assortment. Oh, maybe I don't have it handy. No, I don't. I'd have to dig it up somewhere. No, that's all good, man. Yeah. Yeah, anyway, he's... Sean Gordon Murphy's the man. He's a great draftsman. His Batmobile is phenomenal. What That'd is Darstar awesome. saying here? Darstar is saying something. Could you work the legs into the line of eyes and body with the K? Not sure what he's referring to. Any of you guys know? Oh, your logo. The spin kick. Oh, Dude, spin kick. That's yeah, why yeah. I know right away. I ordered the All same right. thing. The leg and yeah, yeah, that's true. Cool. Yeah, I was thinking about that too. My brain was looking at it going, hmm, how would that look? But then you'd have three dudes kicking or something like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> 
Yeah, spin kick comics, man. Got to have that martial arts, martial arts factor. That's what originally got me into art, like wanting to draw comic books. Was I was so into karate, and I watched, uh, or I, I was reading The Punisher, and I wanted to do fight sequences like The Punisher and Daredevil, like what I was seeing in the eighties. Yeah, and they had awesome. those fight scenes. Like in The Punisher, everybody was always chasing and shooting at him, and there's always like car, like hardcore car uh, chases and gunfights. And <laughs> I thought that was awesome. Yeah, yeah. I didn't, I didn't really pick up Daredevil until later on. When did, when was the first Daredevil comic that I picked up? I'm not 100% sure. I think it might have been in my young adult life. Might have been a Sheridan College uh, <laughs> by the time. Was there. it a Frank Miller Daredevil or was it Lee Weeks or who was the artist at the time? John yeah, Romita? I, yeah, there's lots of things that got lost in time. When I went to college, my mom decided to give all my comic books to my nephew. Oh, no. No. <laughs> uh. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. I had a bunch of books, nothing, I don't know. <laughs> she she gave a lot of stuff away, so Dang. just like my art books and my brother <laughs> sold them. Sold I them would be I out. just that's awful. Like I I, like I lost them. my Lego collection. I I actually gave my Lego collection to a kid. Uh, that kid was very fortunate because I had so many spaceships in that Lego collection, so many like space parts. Oh, there was that was back there. <laughs> like my yeah, childhood yeah. was golden. I don't know about you guys, but my, I did not have any like abuse in my childhood. I, my childhood was like Saturday morning. I would wake up like before the sun and I'd watch those really awful cartoons that they gave out on like the local station. <laughs> like it was the old, the old Spider-Man and Johnny Quest yeah. and stuff. Oh and yeah. The Wizard of Oz. The, remember how awful the Wizard of Oz cartoon was? And yet I liked I it. I know now. I never watched it back then, but I did check it out recently. It's terrible. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's <brutal. laughs> I, I would crack that open and, and I'd play Lego and build spaceships. And it was oh, awesome. man, that so cool. Yeah, I, I watched all those uh, old school cartoons in Bob's basement growing up. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> I didn't even know that. <laughs> the house that I grew up in, Chad LaDuke, used to play there all the time with the yeah. people who lived there before me. I didn't Come even know on. that until recently. Yeah, that's Come funny. So Chad, uh, Chad and I grew up in the same street, right across the street from each other. We're neighbors. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty wicked. So cool. So cool. I was like three blocks away. Yeah, yeah. Maybe a little bit yeah. more. He was across from the high school. Five minute walk. Yeah. Well, kind of stagger joined it off the high school, but <laughs> <clears throat> Daryl could look out the window and be like, hmm. Yeah, here comes the girls. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I better make sure my hair is combed and my teeth are brushed. <laughs> <laughs> the I'll, I'll right sit there. up front on the porch and gently <laughs> strum my guitar. This guy, <laughs> this guy keeps on dropping his towel. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, <laughs> that looks. I'm just sitting there watching Bob draw, like do the lines and stuff. It's pretty mesmerizing. I think Dar Darsar is like the only one watching again, aren't you? He's, oh, he's awesome, man. That guy's yeah. great. We got to have him on the stream. Yeah, for sure. <clears throat> I haven't even looked at the uh, Sasquatch Viking Kickstarter to see how things are going. Uh, you guys oh. had a really good first day, though, eh? I thought. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we'll uh, continue. Oh. Did uh, we didn't let Darsar know uh, what the plans were with uh, possibly the artist? He just dropped some neat looking page art, <clears throat> and uh, I'm trying to acquire the page art so I can make a specialty edition book that we can release as a specialty tier on the Kickstarter. Awesome, awesome. Oh, you're you're frozen up too, oh, Liam. I am. Look at that. 
<laughs> okay, well, that's cool because I was going to show you. I, I actually yeah. found the white knight. Let me. Uh, I don't want to interrupt like, Bob because really what he's doing right is great. I'm home. I'm on the home shopping network right now. That's, that's what's right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's uh, reestablish my camera connection. Now, was Darsar the one who asked that question about writing on your stream last night, or was that someone else? Uh, last night was it last night? Or when was your couple nights ago? Geez, it, it was. Yeah, Darsar was yeah. like he was in I think had, in on that one. So get a question for Daryl. I think it was something, something about the writing process. I don't know if it was Darsar though, but it was. Yeah, it was Darsar. Yeah. I wonder if Daryl could answer that. Are you still here, Daryl? I'm still here. What was the question? That I don't know. Hey, hey, Daryl, uh, I don't, I can't. Yeah. Sorry, I'm speaking uh, jumblies here. Um, Daryl in the chat, uh, Daryl Swatsky, the writer, is here. Uh, can you remember that question that you had asked the other day during the Vikings launch? He might be able to answer your query. Uh, yes, I'll almost certainly try. Uh, it might take him a sec. Yep, no worries. I'm just oh, scribbling on a Dungeons and Dragons map. Oh, they, I was like private chat. There's Daryl. Daryl! <laughs> Hello. <clears throat> I think I've got this. Right. Now. Let's see he would have been caught. There we go. I'm back. Just Who knows what the glitch of... was? Some kind of connection. Lots of technical difficulties tonight. It happens. I work through it. Let me let me show you the white knight. I'm kind of looking like a new Loompa tonight, man, with the <laughs> lighting. <laughs> I think your lighting's great, man. I like, really love the old progress. school Loompas. <laughs> <laughs> Not the deep Roy ones. Let's uh, let's check out this this white knight thing. Uh, there we go. Yeah, so this is the first page of White Knight. Oh wow, that looks awesome! Like, look at his Batmobile. Oh. The elements he's yeah. got on it. He, he designed his own Batmobile. Yeah, that's really cool. So He's definitely taking from new age, but also classic looks too. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I love the way he split the tires. He's got like guns in, in between the tires. <clears throat> He's got like a bit of a low. Yeah. I love like the drafting. I, I've spent quite a while looking at this. The way he's got the one point perspective here. And then two point perspective in the back, and they're like three different worlds: foreground, middle ground, background, clearly delineated. Yeah. Right. Yep. Really nice. The Batmobile comes up into Arkham Asylum. It's big and long, like uh, like the first or second Batman movie, you know. Yeah. And look how simplistic the the shapes and everything else. Is real like and he he's not shy about putting like making it messy either like his fingerprints are on this he uses his fingerprints a lot so that would be cool. a pretty small panel then yeah you can he divides up he divides up the frame with like different worlds right there's multiple worlds in one frame like this the, this background here he does that a lot i really like it oh we There's lost cool our stylistic. viewership we lose viewership? No, that's too bad. That's okay. So there's, uh, I, I just love him for his Batmobile. I want to get that back here. Yeah, here we go. Check this out. Look at that frame. Oh, that'd cool. be a, that'd be a humdinger to draw. <laughs> so good. <laughs> Yeah, the, the Joker's got like roller skates or something. <laughs> it was like a hoverboard, man. Totally, totally. That's exactly oh, yeah, it's a hoverboard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's <laughs> ridiculous. a souped up hoverboard. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. Mm. Yeah, I, I was very happy when I, when, I, when I got this comic on Comixology. That is pretty sweet. And everyone talks about his idea 
uh, of like making the Joker the good guy and Batman the bad guy. I'm like, you take it or leave it. <clears throat> I'm just in for panels like this. Like, this is just insane. I love the yeah. light source though, too. Yeah, yeah that's and there's all these little details. Oh, like he's got a, look at the uh, poster in the background there. Zoom in uh, right above the figure. Yeah, Batman yeah. Series. You see it. <laughs> you see it. Yeah, that's great. Love that show. <laughs> the so he's got all the toys. Batman. He's Batman's yeah. biggest fan, right? Look at look at all the little like vin oh, yeah. little cars at the bottom there. Uh, there. Like how fine does this dude go into it with uh like it it really interests me to see like the working, like how like what kind of pen size and, and where his starting point is and you know. Oh it's crazy. Is he traditional or is he like digital? Oh, he's traditional. This is all traditional. He sells okay. the originals, and the originals are gorgeous in black and white, of course. Yeah, so they're all pencil. Yeah, pencil and ink, and he inks oh. it himself. So he's got this interior of the library, where the Joker is. I, I really like that one too, with all the books. It's great, but all out of it all, his Batmobiles it steals the show. Like, how long does great. it take him to actually do a panel or a page? Yeah, good question. Like he works week? fast. He's he's very fast. He I know he can do. I think he said, uh, he he work he he does like five pages a week. Wow! Like uh, penciled and inked. Uh, I believe so. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, that's impressive. Because those are detailed too. Those settings. Yeah. Big wow. time. Yeah, that's uh, that's a workload. If I would put one of those out in a week, I would be a happy man. Right? It'll happen. I think if you keep going at it, you know? Yeah, Alan Mata, Sean Gordon Murphy's amazing. Yes, he is. Yeah, he <laughs> is the Shazna. Yeah. Got to have good heroes, man. Like, if you don't select artists to follow that you, you like, think you can never compete with, you're, you're not dreaming big enough, you know? You got to go for the guys who are doing the stuff you really want to do. I'm, look, I'm looking right at the artist that I know exactly what I want to do. <laughs> Ditto, man. Ditto. I want to do myself. <laughs> <laughs> that's, 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 that's me, kind of I can be. <laughs> uh, it, it's trite, but it's true, man. Yeah. I like it. I take inspiration, but I still want to be myself. It's pretty amazing to see like how people work and how refined their process is, right? And how, how much they have going on. Yeah, yeah like, for sure. It's amazing what you're doing. It's amazing what Bob's doing. Like, I take inspiration from each one of you, and it helps push me and drive me as well. Thanks. There's um, just the fact that you're producing things and bringing artists together. Uh, it's so great. So great. Like that's, that's pretty much exactly what I want to do with my life is make comics. Yeah, sure. But it's more so collaborate with artists. Like that's just the best. Like right, what I'm doing right now, live streaming with you guys, this is what I want to do with the rest of my life. Until the day I die, I just want to be with artists, doing comics, drawing, talking smack. It's great. <laughs> All I want to do is hang out with artists and stuff, right? Like, um, there was for years and years and years where, you know, I hung out with a bunch of different people, but nobody was an artist and it was just a weird way of life. For sure. Yeah, right? absolutely. Like, it's really tough to be around people that don't have any sort of creative ambition, you know, whether it be writing, whether it be like musically inclined, like, yeah, just because the group, the group effect that you get from multiple creative people, just like what you were talking about, people pushing you. It's the, that's that exactly. <laughs> yeah, pushing you away or pushing you towards it. Like when I hang out with some of the people that I work with, you know, and my, my day job is just driving bus, right? They're like, <laughs> oh yeah, art is a waste of time, you know? You and got a like, comment here, Liam. I'm going to post it on the thing. For oh, you. right on. <laughs> Sasquatch robot comic. <laughs> oh, that's where I love comic. That would be awesome. Far in the future. 
I, <laughs> I can draw I could draw a Sasquatch robot. Oh yeah. <laughs> Do that. Well, you, with some of the the Sasquatch and <laughs> um, our newer our newer story or whatever. The, if I was to draw another Sasquatch for you, I think I'd do more the traditional Sasquatch. As much as I liked my Simon Bisley rock and roll Sasquatch, I like the rock and roll one too. Yes. Thanks, that man. was fun. <laughs> Who came in? Which came? Just make sure if you're in the uh, you're viewing, th throw a thumbs up. So uh, uh, yeah, uh, a, a thumbs up uh, is always the uh, great thumbs thing up for on sure. Facebook. Makes me happy. Really happy. We didn't want to squish yeah. our toe. What's your toe? Just like I gotta close down my thing in order to actually show my video because I don't have audio if I close down my main screen. Because <laughs> it'd be fun. Um, are you talking to him? Yes. So you should be quiet. <laughs> Those swallow sounds are great. <laughs> <laughs> Swallowing. The kids are so loud, man. I had this funny habit when I was a kid where I, when I drink from like a glass of water, my eyes would go really wide. <laughs> drinking water was the greatest thing ever and my my friend uh whose name was also daryl by the way who just like he thought it was hilarious it's like dude drink water again okay he just like bust a gut <laughs> that's funny i'm dry now i need more water <laughs> all this talk about water <clears throat> Ah, there's a whole lot of drawing going on. Whole lot of drawing going on. <laughs> Someone's got to hold down the fort. That's right. <laughs> the Oompa Loompa. <laughs> got, I don't got, think you're an Oompa Loompa. Got some good zooms going on there. <clears throat> hey, Alan. I threw Alan a, a invite as well. So... If you want to hop on the stream too, Alan, you can. We can have like just a eight, eighty-seven people on the stream at the same time. I'll we bet you he's bouncing back and forth, can't we? Oh, I actually got to get going. Make sure my kiddo gets to bed for school tomorrow. Yeah, school. <laughs> oh What's yeah, that? well, on online school or whatever. <laughs> tomorrow. Pardon? We have one more day. You guys start because you're at a different school, right? You start tomorrow. No, she starts technically Wednesday, so it should be a normal day tomorrow. But we'll see. Oh, I, yeah, I got to get in the rhythm of things. Yeah, well, yeah, her school is different too. They have such a small amount of people. But anyway. Well, thanks. Man. Yeah. Always a treat, man. <clears throat> yeah, we appreciate you yeah. giving us the lowdown on. Your uh, your writing and your perspective. You should get a GoFundMe yeah. for some new internet. <laughs> yeah, no shit. <laughs> no shit. <laughs> All right. I hope you guys have fun. I'll talk yeah, to you soon. All right, guys. All right. See you, man. We're still staying on, yeah. 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 I'm just drawing anyway, so. There we go. We we'll, we'll shift the. The th thingamajiggies around what happens. Ooh, mine popped up there. How is that possible? What? Why? Oh, is it because I'm like the main, like mo moderator? Like I can pop my screen up. Oh well, yeah. You and I can both share screen, right? Hey, what do you think of how the bottom things turning out here for the, like the perspective and stuff on that bottom panel, Liam? I mean, they're they're in that space. That's where they are. There's no doubt about it. You have succeeded in putting them in space, which is a, a massive feat for an illustrator. Sweet. I'm just going to go through and now start knocking in blacks, but I'm not as, uh, as cunning as Bob with the uh, penciling and prepping of his pages. <laughs> I, yeah. just, I just go for it, right? Well, I, yeah, I think I might be different than most in that regard, though. I thought that I could embellish with um, the inking, but yeah, I just find it easier to 
be very explicit with the pencil. I think this is my first panel ever with speed lines up here at the top. I love speed lines. Yeah, but it's going to be more like the ground kind of replicating speed lines. So you're still going to get cracks and fractures in the ground. So yeah, mess around a little bit. And then I might relax on the amount of dots and the size of the dots that are all around this portal that's opening up. Well, that can also be worked out in the coloring too, right? It may be high contrast black and white, but you'll have a lot of control over that. Yeah, yeah reduce point. it, right? Because it's Kirby. Yeah, it's definitely Kirby influenced. So, like, that's the whole whole deal is to make it look Kirby esque, right? So, that's who I guess that's who I'm kind of trying to. Uh, follow right now so that's a noble noble goal man you know i everyone nowadays is looking like david finch or jim lee right yep that's how most artists are, are going for because that's just the the biggest <laughs> the very biggest draw like the biggest youtube presence you know you're using procreate right bob yeah bob's yep. using procreate that's correct I've used it for everything. Like even panel designs, I, I've done everything in Procreate. I know some people use like Clip Studio, stuff like that, because it has this, a pretty good setup there for um, setting up your panels. But I don't know, I just find it easier to stay within one program. Oh, I'm trying to get the it's trying to sneak Bob's just a little bit larger. No, but it's like, <laughs> I think the largest we can get Bob's is on this three panel spread here. <clears throat> if we do upgrade to uh, a better stream yard and stuff like that, then all the people that we add as moderators can, can do whatever, right? Absolutely. There's like something that popped up in the private chat here. Yep, but I said that to you. Okay, so which one? <laughs> That's your call, right? Whether it be Facebook or YouTube. Yeah, that way, yeah, that way, it only because otherwise it kind of just like you don't want to keep it blurbs clean, right? across all platforms. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's why they use the private chat. <laughs> I see. Yeah, I see the private chat as like an operational thing, just to keep everything smooth, smoothing out without like disturbing Talking. the people who are watching the stream with your like technical crap. You know. Yeah, that I, that more so comes with the moderator as well. For sure, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because you want to have like a clean uh, channel, right? You want it to be entertaining, as, as entertaining as possible. And that's really hard to do, man. Really hard to do. Alan's liking the little details there of the... Uh... I like all the little details of the Android slash. Yeah, thanks, man. Oh. High yeah. praise from that kid, let me tell you. Yeah. <laughs> it is uh, just the beginning of the squash bot or the squatch bot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, and then we got another one here. And Bob's composition with the staircase is really awesome and impactful. Yeah, and Bob yeah. is sick. Thanks. Sick. Yeah, it's pretty rad. Hey, Bob, um, we got to get you to show. I don't know if we can do it now just because of technical limitations, but we got to show some of your uh, characters, your character studies. Like you had one of this dude who was full color that I saw one time. Oh, yeah. Uh, I did Luke Skywalker. And then I did like, are you talking about the Instagram stuff? Uh, was it Instagram? Um, I, th I think it was. I think we were on a Discord. We were we were chatting on a Discord or something. Let me see. Uh, I did oh, it, was a, it was a Facebook group and you you shared yeah. this one drawing and it was so good. Your character like it was an old man looking kind of crotchety or something. I wonder if you're talking about that actor, man. Yeah, um Terry Carnation. Yeah. Was that what it was? Okay. <clears throat> This guy? 
That's the one. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Terry Coronation, host of Dark Air. He's hilarious. He's also um, the host of... Um, Shoot, what is it? He's kind of like the Crypt Keeper kind of character. Um, oh man, I wish I could remember what it was. But Dark Air is his main one. Yeah, I was just kind of messing around with color, trying out with this. And then of course I did Luke Skywalker. That was fun. Oh yeah, that looks great. That's like movie poster worthy right there. Yeah, that was really fun. I love doing the lightsaber. It was really cool it's the way good. you put you put the shadow on the hand on the one, and then a light source on the next one, because that's kind of how it would be. Yeah, and I was working like I worked from reference. I don't know how closely I ended up following it, but it was fun anyway. I remember having fun with it. Yeah, those are great. And then really I, clean line work too, man. Here I am. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's paint. fantastic. Fantastic. <laughs> hey, yeah, I think I I've used got some self-portraits. What about you, Chad? Do you have some self-portraits? Me? No. No self-portraits. Hey, right, Alan. Thanks for joining us, man. Yeah, take it easy, Alan. Thanks, man. We got to get you back on maybe just to hang out and do like a a draw in the back. He's always welcome. We should just give him like, a, we should just like group send links to anyone so they can drop in and out as they please. Yeah. I sent it to Felipe and Alan, the link as well. And, uh, I don't know if I reached out to anybody else or not. Yeah, being on a live stream is, is, uh, not easy Ooh. when you're not used to it. Like I, I'm, I'm so happy. Like every time I get a live stream invite, I get all happy, get excited, <laughs> get my lights all going on, you know, set everything. It only takes like five minutes and I'm all set up and ready to go. Fully lit. Yeah. I, I thought you were actually like, uh, you know, getting all dressed up in your suit and, you know, <laughs> Oh, you thought I was going to do that again. Like, full, full steam that's ahead, that's for special occasions. <laughs> I'm think. running out from behind the curtain, fake audience cheering. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really enjoyed that actually that was a lot of fun getting everything all hyped up like that oh for sure that live stream was probably the funnest live stream yet dude that's the least fun live stream we're gonna have going forward there's gonna be like way more stuff i think we're just getting warmed up you know well there's definitely more and more momentum momentum <laughs> momentum and daryl had internet problems i don't mine is just my mouth <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's got good flow bob good flow thanks like oh, how oh, you got the little blobby things going on too yeah every once in a while it gets all jittery and I rest my hand on the iPad too, so I think that's part of it. But for the most part, it the palm rejection's really good. The last iPad I had, I had to float my hand the whole time. Oh, oh that's garbage. Which was, yeah, it was difficult. I do like to rest my hand. I need to. Like, uh, that's how I always draw too. Unless I'm going to do something loose. Like if I'm drawing yeah. like on a canvas or something like that, or it's upright, then it's a little different. Yeah, for sure. I mean, there's a time and place for the large gestural kind of strokes, but I don't know. When you're working with panels, to me, the workspace itself is a lot smaller too, so. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh, this is, I've messed up the chassis. Oh, it looks pretty wicked. <clears throat> the perspective is like king. You can't lose sight of it at any point. 
And the more details you have, the more difficult it gets to maintain it, right? But that's yeah. part of the joy. That's part of the joy. Like the, the more detail you have, the more interesting it is, but you're more prone to make mistakes. I'm glancing up every once in a while to check out what you guys are up to. That robot is looking killer. Thanks, man. His name is Tempo. That's a good name. <clears throat> he was the tempo of the operation. He's like, he's been programmed to uh, manage a time travel mission and manage all the contingencies and all the data that they have uh, over the years on the subjects they're trying to manipulate. Now, is AI in general like something that always draws you to a story? Like, is that kind of your jam? Uh, I love it all. Anything sci-fi and tech, I'm into it, man. Like, yeah. I, what's what I'm really interested in is surveillance culture. And so I was like, I, I'm interested in AI that can decipher and manipulate data, right? Like uh, the 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 AIs that are used to spy on us, for instance. <clears throat> like, you're you're gonna like if you and I were talking about steak, right? We mentioned steak, and I want a yeah. T-bone, and and I want a New York, you know, or whatever. And then all of a sudden, it shows up on your Google feed, you know, the next day, or you get a YouTube video about steak. You're like, hey, wait a second. There was no person listening to me doing that. That was a bot. Uh, that was fishy. like, that was an AI that caught that. I'm fascinated by that. And how is that yeah. going to age over time, right? Like if someone from 500 years gets a hold of that data and they're going to send something back to our time frame, that's a lot of in like that's a lot of information to be able to use for a successful mission, right? Yeah, the yeah. visible blob flart. It's crazy. So that's what Tempo does. Tempo is able to access all of this surveillance culture and AI data uh, from everything to try to ensure that his mission to alter the past is successful. Cool. He's a good guy. Who's your favorite all-time AI, like in a sci-fi series? Oh, dude. Or like, give me like a top two or three, if you can't name one. It's probably different. Yeah, I mean, I love Jarvis from Iron Man. I think Jarvis is great because he's got a sense of humor and he's good. Yeah. Yeah, and Friday, like all of that, those MCI, MCU AIs. Oh my gosh, wow, <laughs> are, uh, are are awesome. They're really good. I mean, Hal is like the the best, but he's so <laughs> evil. Have you ever tried saying "Open the Bombay doors" to your iPhone? <laughs> what happens? Uh, F, was it "Open the Bombay doors" or "Open the"? It was a Bombay doors, right? Anyway, yeah, so I, uh, it just says, uh, I can't do that, Dave. Uh -huh. I can't. And it has like a bunch of different responses. If you say it over and over again, it'll like, come up with many different responses for for that. I that had was the uh, line. Was it Bombay Doors? What was it? The, uh, I don't know, actually. I'm gonna I had my phone starting to talk to me today for the first time ever, and I have no idea why. It just happened. Like kind of like that Siri voice or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And I don't have Siri on my phone. Pod bay, pod bay doors. Okay, let's try this. Let's see if my phone will like it. Open the pod bay doors. <laughs> uh, dark, dark. Got a, it's size. I, I like that, William. <laughs> Open it's, the pod bay doors. It's size. What is this pod bay everyone keeps talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Open the PO. Open the pod bay doors. <laughs> the intelligent pod. agents will never live that down, apparently. <laughs> agents? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <clears throat> yeah, Darsar knows. <laughs> yeah, I just popped that. <laughs> you popped that. Up oh, sorry. Yeah, I was I was occupied. <laughs> I was doing well on the arm, but I've messed up the chassis. I don't think I can. I don't think I can salvage the chassis. Uh, no, uh, has Dar Darsar seen your um, cover for the one Sasquatch story? 
the cover that Liam has done. Have you seen that, Darasar? I could share that with you, buddy. I'm going to pop open your cover. Did we sh share that the other day on the live stream, didn't we? Did we? What live stream was that? I don't think you did. Not that I saw. I was in there for most of it, but... I'm um I'm just I'm determined to not make it the Liam show. You know what I mean? So <laughs> I'm 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 honored that you're showing it. That's great. Thank you. <laughs> but this is about your Kickstarter and stuff, right? So I mean as much as the Liam show is amazing and everything, I love the Liam show. <clears throat> I'm a big fan. Not, this isn't so much about like <laughs> my rolling Kickstarter. It's uh this is just about a, a drawing stream and you know, Bob and you know trying to create a, a culture here at uh, Tardigrade. For sure. And let's, let's see here. Oh yeah, there we go right here. You watching Dar? There's Liam's uh, Sasquatch there. Let's see. I love that cover, man. That's oh. an awesome plot there. I just, I wanted to do the Simon Bisley second light source thing so bad. I just, I had to do it. Yeah, I posed for this one. So these are my abs. <laughs> <laughs> my wife's watching. She's probably laughing right now or choking on her uh, chips. <laughs> Love in the time of Sasquatch. Love in the time. <laughs> Love in the time of Sasquatch. <laughs> Needs a song. <laughs> oh, I love Aerosmith. Dry so panel. Much. He likes your favorite over. Aerosmith song. Yeah, that's right. <clears throat> My favorite is definitely Sweet Emotion. It's from my album called Mainly Because of the Milk. <laughs> <laughs> you getting an allergic reaction from that? Are you lactose? I am. <laughs> so mental. I still eat cheese though. Uh, is that like you a actually are lactose? I am. Oh, you sorry son of a gun! Wow. Oh, that's awful. Is that a gecko? Yeah, it's a gecko-like character. I can't remember his name. Bruh, that's he's great. like a servant of this dude. Here's another one of them. Out the... Oh, he was up there. Nice. Yeah, that's where he appears. And he follows his uh his leader here. Sweet. I'm kind of loosey goosey with the line work now, and I'm being thick with it intentionally because of that. It's all gonna be black space, so except for those little blobs of ceiling, right? Yeah. And even that, I'll probably end up just putting it all in black and then going back with the eraser instead. So I'll do like subtractive art. Sweet. I'm yeah, I like easy. coming back for some of my panels and then just laying in the whites at the end. Like I yeah. have for the, sorry, I'm going to quickly jump to the big screen here. For this panel here, like the one to the right, um, like I just put all my whites on a layer, right? So I can easily pull them out. Yeah. So just to see how it looks negative space wise. And but I'm that's still the great thing about digital art is you could experiment with layers. Like you could free yourself up to try new things that you wouldn't otherwise risk. It's the greatest thing ever. It, it is really, fantastic. Once you get over the whole technical side of it and all the problems that happened with like pen sensitivity and freezing and et cetera, et cetera, <laughs> it, it's really an awesome fun tool to use yeah you know what? my computer's been working really well lately really yeah huh. nice you know what i did i did a couple changes um and it's stopped pretty much everything um yeah it's actually running really decent right now and dude i'm uh, so glad that's not great. To mention, I'm actually getting more familiar with drawing with the, the pen. Like, oh man, did it ever take me such a long time to get used to the digital pen? So. Yep. Yeah. Did you get a Mac? No, I did not. <laughs> I 
I did not. What you it. need is, yeah, you definitely need an iPad. <clears throat> it's on my it's on my wish list. I'm gonna get a nice, fairly fairly sized one. Yeah, the i the the pros on my. Uh, well, I was actually planning on getting one, but then I realized after I paid, because I decided to pay the artists and stuff to just pay them before the end of the Kickstarter, mm. and uh, I wasn't able to to buy my iPad because. Artists need to eat. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me about it. Uh, today no. I went to Chapters and I was going to buy all kinds of stuff. I ended up only buying one book. I bought uh, Foundation and Empire, Asimov. I'm looking forward to this. I see that again. Sorry, I just missed it. Oh, just it's just the cover of Isaac Asimov's uh, oh. Foundation and Empire. So it's still got Harry Seldon in there. So I saw that, so I picked it up. Classic sci-fi. Oh yeah, I'm man. Aware of anyway. I have actually never read an Isaac Asimov. Nor I've had I. books lo loaned to me, but I've never read them. There's, I mean, there's, there's a bunch of classic sci-fi authors that if you love sci-fi, you have to read. Um, for me, it's Isaac Asimov, William Gibson, um, probably Philip K. Dick, but I haven't read anything by him yet. And Stanislaw Lem. William Gibson, who I know. You know William Gibson. That just freaks me <laughs> out. That. that freaks me out that you know the, William The weird Gibson. thing is, is I worked at an art supply store in North Vancouver. used to come in, and I used to do these art demos and stuff because it was part of our, like our, our uh, culture at the art store that we worked at. So... Mm. Um, he used to come in and sit in these demos and the last one he, he sat in that I did was an airbrushing demo. <laughs> yeah, it was great. Wow. <laughs> that is really cool. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> it's an old book, but it's new to me because Asimov is dead. He died in the nineties. Yeah. yeah. He wrote over like 500 books. This guy's insane. Yeah. And that's... he died at 72 years old. He died and he, he did that much writing. And I find it weird that a science fiction writer used to come watch me do art demos. <laughs> great. It's great. I maintain that writing is like, it's, it's pure art that every painter has to be a writer, but not every writer has to be an artist or painter. Yeah. I sent you those writings of those things that I wrote up pretty quickly too. eh? really? Eh? Yeah, you wrote those much. fast? Which one? Oh, all that, the, all those scripts? You wrote uh, those right? Each, the, the Sasquatch, the Awakening. I wrote that probably in an hour and a half, two hours. Oh, man, that's awesome. Good and job. The other one, the, the other one, the thing is though, is some of those scripts came like right after like a, a meditation session. And then all of a sudden, you know how sometimes things just come to you mm -hmm. and a storyline or something just comes to you like that happened to me and then I just wrote it down and it had such fluidity that there was no pause or um, anything in the actual writing itself and I wrote it down as quickly as I could while I had it. Right. And that was the outcome of a couple of those scripts. Yeah, that's fantastic, man. Yeah, I definitely like that. Yeah, because I rewrote the... Uh, <clears throat> there was the um, Devil's Ridge, Dawn of Sasquatch. Um, it's, it's not the... It was before the name there. Uh, here, one sec. I'm thinking here, thinking out loud. Oh, you know what I keep on doing? I keep on uh, moving my mouse between the screens, but I see it in the screen on, you know, where you guys are working, and but it's really locked in the other screen. <laughs> and I'm trying <laughs> to click on move. Uh, here, I can give you the name. I, I can't even remember Oh yeah, it's called New Beginning, like, um, and then Sasquatch Awakening. Awakening is the the title for um, 
the the rebranding of the Sasquatch in space character, like the the um, I don't want to use any of the uh, the former names. So yeah, <clears throat> yeah you want to respect the copyright, the effort, but got to make it your own, man. Well, it doesn't seem like you're hurting for any ideas. You're going to have lots of stuff. Like this this particular Kickstarter here, um, especially if it goes well, is going to give you a lot of momentum to take those ideas and do something with them, right? Yeah. I'm a yeah, big firm I... believer in momentum. And if it doesn't go well, it could really be an impediment to you moving forward. You could like, get some serious discouragement too, right? So I'm really hoping that this thing works for you. Oh, I'm not uh, uh, too too distracted by any sort of obstacles that may um, be in my path. No, yeah, you're a better man than I. I take it to heart, man. I remember I did a I had a, an eBay store, and I would sell my paintings on eBay, and I did pretty well for a while because I had this this whole platform set up where you could spend twenty bucks and get a lot of eyeballs on your work. It was basically like buying shelf space in a store, you know? And so I sold paintings like gangbusters. It was really good, but there were still a couple that didn't work. And so when I would do this painting and then take all, all the photographs and post it and do the write up and everything, and it wouldn't sell, it would like, I get depressed, man. It was rough. Like the <laughs> highs and lows, right? It was real. Uh, for sure. Like, <clears throat> whether it be success or failure or whatever, like, I don't know, they're all points of contrast in, in, you know, how you perceive what happens is I think the biggest, the biggest outcome. Right. So exactly. you can choose to fold, fold your cards and pack it up and, you know, you got to have some seriously thick or, skin. Like that's, that's the whole part of being like a man and being in business, right? Is thick skin. But I'm definitely not a man, so. <laughs> no, you're a Sasquatch. That's what you are. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, I don't even know how many pages I got wrote on this one. Uh, yeah, I got up to page 22, splash page 22. Wow. Not but this bad. was like the new, this was the rebranding of, of the cover that you had done that storyline. So, and I was just playing around with, uh, just names and so on and so forth for the actual like Sasquatch itself. So, um, one of the names that I liked was, um, oh man. Why am I having so many brain farts? It was uh, Bajwa. But there Bajwa. was uh, some other ones as well. So I'll, I'll play around with it. Bajwa yeah, is like... Uh, what is this Bajwa of which you speak? Oh, that's the Sasquatch name. Oh, it's his name. Oh, okay. Got it. Got it. Right. So this was the guy that... The, the one Sasquatch character that was part of the original Biologicals. So when I had wrote the biological or uh, had done all the outlines and stuff for the biological characters and there was always a Sasquatch involved with even some of the drawings and stuff that I had done, right? So space Sasquatch. Yeah. Love it. Uh, I think I think Dar's onto something with this whole like robo Sasquatch thing. Yeah. yeah. Well, there is a guy so. that uh, I supported on Kickstarter and he has one called Squatch Banot. <laughs> that just sounds awful and our first funder <laughs> the very first funder of our project was a guy who uh like dan from uh, big fit nose karate aid eh? bob who is this dan from big foot nose karate but nose karate i don't know if i know this dan you you you're one of his followers on instagram big foot nose karate He's got like the Bigfoot doing like karate moves with a, like a sword and stuff. He did a Kickstarter and stuff. Okay, this, a... the Sasquatch that I know on social media is the Sax Squatch who plays the saxophone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <Lord. laughs> There's a whole thing here that I'm learning about right now. <laughs> <laughs> here, 
here, let me get my mask. <laughs> and then I can play the flute or the, the what the hell is those little things called? The recorders. Yeah. <laughs> and it won't be good. She was a normal peasant girl until she met a hairy one who stole her heart. They're forbidden. Like he, Dar really wants to write stories, don't you, Dar? <laughs> he does. <laughs> He's just all kinds of ideas. Others new comments. <laughs> Holy smokes! I, I'm like way behind. <laughs> I had to scroll down. Did you get a Mac? Was that a new book? Hmm. <laughs> Robo Squad. I love it. Can we can we clone Dar Sar? We need a whole <laughs> bunch of followers just like him. Sent into It'd be space. Great. Yeah, this is awesome. Like just to have like uh, a fan. <laughs> so awesome <clears throat> you're gonna get like our our first uh free uh fan t-shirt dude story of how apes were sent into space in the 60s eventually became sasquatch that's like kind of like the planet of the apes isn't it where they become highly evolved and then sent back <clears throat> squat squatch or not squatch or not that's it i love writing stories <laughs> yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so it's basically really the uh i can give you kind of like a, a lowdown of what, what happened to that i just had it up word so in the not new beginnings, but Sasquatch awakening. <clears throat> it, go, it goes back to some of the original storylines that I had discussed with Johnny initially about what I wanted the world to be and stuff. But then Johnny took it and, you know, made it his own, you know. But it still wasn't within the, um, basically the framework of what, what I was thinking the story to be and, and where I wanted it to be for like the um like how the sasquatch culture developed in in the storyline <clears throat> but how this one works is it um it had to do with an asteroid or something like that uh that, that collided with the planet and the only way that they their species was able to survive was to go within the planet and to live off of uh subterranean flora <laughs> yeah, I read that. That was that's a pretty cool thing, man. That's yeah, a pretty cool thing. I just found out from a working out station on YouTube that spirulina, spirulina, it's algae that they use for protein powder. It's really high in protein. It's like the highest form, like packed, like right up there with beef and cottage cheese uh, for sure. protein, and it's made of algae. Yep. And yeah. yeah, apparently it's super good for you, but it's disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> you so know that, what? That's Fungus the down part. Fungus <laughs> and um, mycelium, uh, which feed pretty much every plant on the face of the planet through, uh, you know, neural network and connectivity. They break down all the microbial and microorganisms and feed them directly to the plant. So that is where oh, are at. you talking about um those geometric things the little organisms that are all over the sahara desert uh what are they called tardigrade no not though though not tardigrades <laughs> these are these are different they're um yeah they're very like geometric looking uh anyway yeah they're they're what uh algae is basically made out of nice <clears throat> Yeah, it's pretty amazing, like uh, plants and stuff and uh, what they can do, right? So, I mean, everything is sci fi. Like, it's, it's, sci it's, it's science, not fiction. <laughs> it's just, well, we, we bring it to reality, right? Just by, by finding by out that it's real, it. first of all, like <laughs> these things actually happen. I like the fact that the Earth is actually a spaceship. Like it's a really advanced naturalistic spaceship. It's basically what our planet is. Yeah, it's a live. It's a living, living thing for sure. That trips it, me out. It could be just a giant cell. 
and we're just all the bacteria on it. <laughs> yeah, no kidding, right? <laughs> hey, that was really cool the way you colored all that. Kind of reminds me of Pennywise there. <laughs> hey, Bob. Yeah. Yeah, he's got kind of the clownish kind of poof around his neck yeah. there. You just need a little like sewer opening, like a little great opening right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I tried to make him as pompous as possible. Nice. I don't know if I have a better picture of him. He did a great job. I There's quite a few pages that I haven't even seen that I'm looking forward to seeing for sure. So. Zoom in on him. I, I <laughs> like this page. That guy's so crazy. He reminds me of Brom so much from like GTO. Or Gots or GTO. <laughs> oh, he was oh, more tempo. of a keeper. Yeah. To, I, I've written a lot about Tempo. He's uh he's gonna be quite the character. He's got a good sense of humor. All of the characters in my story are all jokers. Like uh, it's important to me that everyone's got uh, a good like wit something so they can always be making fun of each other and tempo is no different they've programmed them that way to kind of alleviate the the i guess the tension of being in a war because he goes back to help them out with this internal war that's pretty wicked Hey, he hey, doesn't Darwin. have a lot of actual memory. Like he's got, so you know, there's random access memory and then there's stored memory. He's all about connectivity. Like all these, uh, um, sorry to cut you guys off there. That was rude. Um, Go ahead. No, no. Cool, cool. Yeah. So in his head, he's got a whole bunch of these arrays. So these are basically Wi Fi connectors. So he can intercept all kinds of signals and process them really fast. So all of his computer components. 500 years advanced as they are, are all geared towards processing information. So he's like a processing beast, but he doesn't have any of the actual memory files that he's accessing. So he has to, it's all about connectivity to the spaceship, which is his uh, library and the signals around us, like uh, around the planet now that he can intercept. Cool. I like your character. He's Thanks. well thought out. It's always neat to hear like the backstory for like an illustration like that. <laughs> no, it was so that. Often, that's all we get is the picture, right? Until the story is actually told. But. Totally. Yeah. It was Dan Price watching us earlier, man. Uh, the creator of Bigfoot Knows Karate. Oh, no way. Yeah. yeah. He, he was one of the guys that threw a like on our, on our thing. It just popped up on the Facebook. That's great, dude. That's yeah, great. So for anybody who wants to know who Dan Price is, let's see. Where are you, Christmas? <laughs> <laughs> Already, right? <laughs> All right. I happy. All right, let's take a look here. I wonder if there's like a quick key for this. There we go, it's in the thing. Keep an eye out for Bigfoot Nose Karate. Can, can you actually, there it is there. Can people oh, swipe that? Like, I don't know, is it possible for people to copy that from the chat, who knows? I would I would assume so. Like I think they can. Oops. Sorry. They look like here, let's see. Sorry, I, I missed that the icon building. I think he's talking about the arrays on top of his head. Ah. Uh, Probably. If it's a Brantford building. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's in Brantford, so. <laughs> Just checked he's it out. Local. Nice. Oh, it acts like a link. Okay. Hey, sweet. That's so good. Oh, that makes things so much easier. 
And then I also put the submissions at Tardigrade Press, Dar, if you want to write a story, buddy. It's the casino now. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've been down to the, the, the arena down there. My son, you know, he does the, the hockey thing. So that is right. I don't get around Brantford too, too much. <laughs> no. Not these days anyway. No. But this whole season that you're in with this like brain injury, car accident thing, it won't last much longer, man. No, no, hopefully it'll all be over soon. It'll definitely be nice to drive the vehicle again at some point in time. Right. Yeah, you know, um, Writer's Duet online is a great resource for scripts and stuff. Have you taken a look at that, Bob, that Writer's Duet stuff? No, I don't think I've heard of that. It's uh, it's great for, like, screenwriters and can break things down, like, really logically. So rather than somebody fighting with structure, which is probably a huge thing, I don't know had I or would I been able to write without having something like that it just helped me immensely yeah it's a good resource eh? oh yeah it was great here i can tag that as well i'm kind of like rocking the moderation today while you guys are just drawn away yeah man <laughs> there you go take a look writer's duet it's uh puts out it's just an easy way to get all your thoughts out there and i know uh, both liam and bob have spent a lot of time developing their characters and working on uh character development and sketches and stuff and you know my like, world building document is like 30 some odd pages <laughs> exactly yeah, yeah. And my world building's all been happening in my brain. I haven't been writing a lot of stuff down, but I do do the general um, outlines and stuff like that. Um, but with the actual scripts, I'm a little bit more uh, more down down to it. So cool, cool, cool. <clears throat> It's like I'm watching both sides happen at the same time. <laughs> it's like you. It's like this exactly what's happening. <laughs> yeah, I'm stuck in the middle, and I gotta like. Oh. <laughs> I gotta take a break from from drawing my comic, man. Like it's been killing me that all I've been doing is focusing on Clip Studio, and that that beast of a program. Like oh, it's supposed to be oh, easy, black. yeah, but it's not. <laughs> it's really challenging. Hey, Liam and I are going to start doing some live stream life drawing stuff. If you want to join in, Bob. Oh, yeah? Like, what do you guys do for that? Oh, shoot. Well, we're just going to kind of um, set up one of the... It worked pretty good today, didn't it, Liam, through the screen? I loved it. I had a great time. I would actually like to make that happen again. Um... Like, do you use a reference? or? Yeah, like, so I... I have a membership to a program called Figurosity. And, you told uh, me about that before, I think. Yeah, and they yeah. have like um like a timed here I can show you right now. Like it's and then I could bring it up. I would love to do some like figure drawing or like life lifestyle. I haven't done that since the Sheridan days. Like it's been a long time for me. Yeah, man. Like I had to seek it out. You don't have to look far. Um, I used an app called meetup.com and I was able to find some local life drawing around where I live doing that. You get so much out of it too, right? Like I wish I took it more seriously back in the Sheridan days. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, but. I mean, you don't have to necessarily have a life model. Like I find that just going from reference, having timed studies and being around other artists is like, it's scratching the same itch. It's great. 
Yeah, I would love to join that. Yeah, like these were some of the drawings from today we did. These were oh wicked. Like those were that was the first sort of second round, some like some of this stuff. Yeah. It was good. Oh yeah, yeah. I let me know guys, because man, that's good practice. Super fun. I ended up yeah. doing this one. This is one we spent a little bit of time on. So I did my I was drawing Phoenix, but then I had to go. <laughs> oh, that's looking <laughs> really cool. Mine turned out way different. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm here. I'm going to steal the screen here for a sec. So yeah, yeah, please do. Curiosity here, and then uh, right here we have quick poses, and uh, you can pick. You know, 15, 30, 60, two minute, five minute. You got your camera angles. Uh, you can pick uh, two minute. Um, you know, front, back, side, whatever. You can pick your. your oops, there was a boob shot there. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then say if you want female left right whatever you hit go you know and then there you go and then i think this is it's set up for muscle right now anyways but then you can oh look at that yeah i love those anatomy look at that that's great anatomy practice solid and then oh that's good too because it's like a seated position Oh, look, these are way more action than the ones we had earlier. I'm disappointed. <laughs> and of course, you can find tons of poses online, right? Oh, yeah. Ours really were like website, um, Bodies in Motion, where it has like short animations and you could freeze it on uh, whatever frame you want. Uh, bodies in Motion, really, really good for that. That's something I've used like for teaching. Don't Is that a, a more, site, uh, bodiesinmotion.com or something? Yeah, I think it's, yeah, if you Google it, it should come up. I, I think you could pay for some, but there's a ton that are free. We got more more droids or more, uh, how do I delete this? Block user. There's like the people that got sister19 dot 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 block user. What is with the the... Uh, hopefully they're not real people, but they probably, oop, there we go. We got like, so this is the structure of the, how it establishes the pages and writers do it, right? You got your page, your panels, your panel one, panel two, you know, your characters, their dialogue, it, it sets it up in a nice format. So, which is pretty sweet. Sometimes that could be a stumbling block. Or any kind of creative form is like, well, what's the format? Like, what's how do we even get started with that? No, and that's that's my, usually my biggest obstacle, and and has been like in high school, I really shit the bed based on like format, right? Like how things were formatted, how how they were written, and stuff like that. And I'm like, what? You got to write like a uh, you know something formatted with you know, <laughs> I, I never understood that until, but I also had some challenges growing up in that I had like these behavioral issues. So uh, really? in, primary, in primary school, I was actually like for, stuck in special ed and they kept me in special ed. So <laughs> Honestly, though, I can't see that you had behavioral issues. Like what? Like, what yeah. did you? Where did you... What did you do? I just didn't like uh, change or supply teachers, and there tended to be a lot of supply teachers. Oh. <laughs> because of you. What's that? <laughs> I said, because of you. You kept chasing them away. Yeah, that's right. No, I'm not stressed them all out. That is, I agree with Lee. That's surprising. Kids, man. They are, they're, they're hard to deal with. Autism is like everywhere right now. Yeah, it's it can be. It can be challenging to find uh, a meaningful way to provide education for them. It's important. Um, yeah, it, it's, it could be challenging for sure. And by the time I went to high school, I'd fallen so far behind on a lot of just uh, 
really structural things when it come came to English and math and just a lot of essential things, right? So I had to play a lot of catch up in the the, the first couple of years of high school. So mm. I would never I, have known. That's why by the time I was in like grade ten or eleven, I was like, "What? An essay has to be structured? How?" <laughs> and I had no idea. And still, even still, like. Uh, grammar and and uh all that other jazz i i just don't know like well, and yet you do comics just right as rain yeah. that's cool you found your thing well for sure man i just don't uh i just didn't have that basic structure <laughs> the foundation yeah i built my house without a foundation so <laughs> wow That's called adaptability, isn't it? I think so. Dealing like the dealing, doing uh, the best you can with the hand you're dealt. How's that? Sure. Come on, I got all aces, man. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> I'm gonna win this hand. <clears throat> so I've been stressing over feet. Robo feet. So, because there's like, yeah, I call that robo toe. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, I think those are actually decent robo feet. I think that's an interesting thing. I like that. And it hasn't made it too complicated to draw either. Like, it's not like it's yeah, more elegant, I a, right? I got a couple of pistons there. And yeah. uh, like some some articulation, um, which is what I wanted. I don't want it to be too mechanical, but I want it to be mechanical enough that it's crude. You know, he's not like a super sleek robot. Yeah, I'm digging that. I think it's repeatable too, right? Like it's. Well, that's just it. It can't be a different robot every panel. So once you do the design, you got to be consistent with it, right? Exactly. Yeah. If you're good, I mean, some people would just not care. You just crank that out super nice and clean and everything too with that little, what size nib pen is that? Is that Yeah, like this is an O2. 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 I love the O2. 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 The O2 and the O1 are beautiful. Oh. Thanks, man. Oh yeah, because you're drawn on an eight and a half by 11 sketch pad anyways. Yeah. I just picked one up today from Michael's. Oh man. Yeah, I, I love this one because it fits in your bag easy. You can take it everywhere. Uh, these sketchbooks for me, they get so beat up so fast, like the spine. So I reinforce them with tape usually. Nice. I got the like artist loft. I think there was like an extra 80 pages or something in the one that I picked up today for like eight ninety nine. dollars Nice. <clears throat> I also caught on the Darsar saying noise earlier on did not uh, <laughs> go unnoticed nice he, he says to figure out some life uh robot feet <laughs> yeah the guy who can't draw feet to save his life well oh, like even even uh, david finch hides his feet like when he's doing half of his drawing oh, man. Now, right? that's like, that's why i want to become a master of drawing feet the you master know? of not drawing feet yeah. Yeah, i want to <laughs> get the feet so good you know, I, I don't want to chintz out on any of the robotic parts either. Like, I want all the robotics and cars to be drafted, like, not super detailed, but, like, accurately in perspective, you know? And so the fundamentals are solid, and it has that comic book energy to it. I don't yeah. want to overwork anything. I want it to all have a sense of li life to it, you know? You know what I find really exciting is the fact that, you know... Like all of us artistically are so different. So <laughs> different, man. Yeah. I love it. I think it's great. Yeah, it's fantastic. And bring such different perspectives to the stuff that we do too, right? Yeah, 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 for sure. <clears throat> No, we're all saw, we're all kind of stuck on the same kind of thing where we're you know we got to go back to the basics. We have to revisit some of those things like life drawing and 
you know, anatomy and all the perspective. Same and, you know, Back to the basics beat. constantly every day. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I look at other Kickstarter comics. I've uh, you can see like on our page that you know there. I think a lot of uh, the backing stuff, like Johnny backed a lot of comic books. I've backed quite a few books myself. Um, yeah, I take a look for sure. I try not to get too uh, too caught up with a lot of the stuff. Um, you know, I only have so much money to output for certain things right now. So <clears throat> yeah, that's just it. Like you want to support people and make the connections. Um, but there's so much stuff out there that you can just kind of get lost in it. And a lot of it is really niche too, right? Yeah. And some of the campaigns that I actually wanted to support, they wouldn't ship to Canada. And these were some of the comics that I really wanted, which was kind of disappointing. Right. So mm. And I don't understand why somebody who lives in the U.S. You know what? I think they're having more issues with their their postal service shipping things to Canada than we are to them. Oh, really? Yeah, because one of uh, our big supporters in some of our past campaigns, uh, Wes, um, who just released uh, his own book and stuff like that, I wanted to get some of his books and stuff like that. And... They were having issues with COVID and he was in the mountains in, uh, in California and was saying something to do with the cost of postage where he was. It was, it was too pricey for him to ship the books to me. Like, so I would have been paying like close to $60 Canadian in order to have one of his books shipped to me. Jeez. So yeah, that's <clears throat> way too much. Yeah, that's it's pricey for a single a single issue, right? A, like a twenty four page book. Now, if you're like someone who's out there trying to support comic book creators, you got some kind of motivation. Like you don't like the where mainstream comics are going, or you just want to support artists who do art that you like, you know, which is comic books. I think those those are the people who probably have some money to throw around, right? Whereas you and me, because we're like normal people who haven't made it successfully in this like huge yet, you know, we don't have bundles of money underneath us. 20 bucks is like, you know, a decent, a decent uh, offering, right. To support another artist. But other people are like, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to drop, you know, a thousand bucks on this and see how many perks I can get and, you know, put it in my man cave. Yeah, I'm willing to drop like 40 bucks on a single book from the U.S. to get it up here. And that's what I've done for a few campaigns recently, right? So, um, <clears throat> like that, I'm good with that. So, but when you start getting, you know, even 20 to $30 more than that for, for like a single book, uh, it just yeah, presents a little bit of challenge. So, for sure, right? Although I'd like to support more. And as much as I could, and I can tell you that as things start to grow, and there tends to be more overhead and and more ro room for growth and more room for other creative teams and projects and stuff like that. Like, man, it's gonna. I will definitely start, you know, supporting more of that culture, more of the group, even though I'm doing my best to to support as many as I can right now. Mm -hmm. So, but I still find too, like tardigrade still acting almost like a support, uh, you know, supporting artists that are, you know, just newly come, you know, newly coming up out of the grass, out of the weeds or whatever. Yeah. You know, giving them an opportunity to work and, and, and such, right. Oh, we're getting hit by more bots right now. Oh yeah. We've gotten hit by lots of bots tonight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Dar's like, uh, I agree. I've been trying to get a final book for a set, and the book was thirty dollars, and the shipping was going to be fifty-five. Yeah, that's like, I ridiculous. Know, I don't know what it is with the American pricing. I th I think what's happening with their postal service is their postal service is actually gouging them for the costs, right? 
I think there's just supply chain issues all over yeah. the place. Wow. Everything is very expensive to do. That's why I think people are taking advantage of that. Uh, you know, the supply chain issue, I can see being an issue when you're you're freighting it across the oceans and things like that. But when your supply chain is Canada, the US, Mexico, you know, like there should be no issue with movement of, of goods, right? So yeah, for sure. Because there hasn't been really any slowdown. And from what I've heard, people have definitely tried to focus on controlling production <laughs> to keep costs high, right? Oh, you, sk you skipped off the... <laughs> now we're just watching Bob. No. <laughs> I can hear my kid downstairs. <laughs> yeah, I'm feeling the hunger kick in and I got to get ready for bed too so I can wake up early. I don't want right. to be waking up late late in the day anymore. Get my get my early on. 5 a.m. for me is when I'm on top of the day and I feel good. Sweet. You crushed that. You crushed that robot. You're in, you're out, you're gone. That's yeah. my that's my <laughs> best tempo to date so far, you know. Yeah. And you got to paint them with tempo or draw them with tempo. Yeah. Hey, you guys want to see some of the uh, sketches initially, the where, where you started from? Let me switch back here. Yeah, let's check it out, man. Chad has seen this already, but. Um, <clears throat> come back. So these were my first, like, how am I going to do his face, right? So I started going old school. Kirby, Iron Man, whatever. I didn't like any of them. And then I thought I wanted to be kind of funny, so I drew a chameleon. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, hey, hold it up. Like, hey, Bob. <laughs> there you go, buddy. <laughs> There's your reference. I really like <laughs> the chameleon. Like the chameleons, dude, they just look hilarious. Yeah, they do. So the I was going for that. Eyes. And then the more I drew it, the more I'm like, this looks too much, too comic booky. Like it's it's too jokey. So and then I went the other way and I made like warrior bot. Like this is obviously a warrior bot of some kind. Yeah, vibes of Terminator or something in there. Yeah, so too scary. And he's meant to be a friendly guy. So that went the other way. Same thing with that. That's like a typical kind of video game thing. Um, there I started to hit on something. But he's, he looks like a superhero there, which he is, but he's not the most athletic robot. His shoulders are too big. You got the so, David Finch, uh, you know, perspective box set up there. And... Love my perspective. Oh, I'm so happy that I can draw in perspective now. It's great. I earned that. So, uh, yeah, this is like number five, like Johnny Five is Alive. That's what it reminds me of. Love the but, details in that one. Thanks, man. Yeah, the different planes were a lot of fun. And this is like a sensitivity thing here, like a vent or like a hearing thing so we can hear. But I figured I'm just going to go specifically with the antenna. So I reduced that, put it down here. And then this is more like almost like athletic robotism, you know? Like he, <laughs> he looks like more live, I guess is the word. So I was like, yeah, he's not really athletic. He's more of a thinky guy, you know? So these That's are awesome. some of the face sketches i'm starting to hone in on what i want his face to look like i kind of like the camera look like yeah, a giant camera look is working and then when i when i did this i hit on that i'm like oh that looks cute kind of looks like a friendly guy you know and so that's mm -hmm. where i went i tried going star wars <laughs> i tried going um gundam yeah, did a little bit of Gundam. This is like post-apocalyptic thing. And then I did this, and his eyes were too small. So then I went this, and that was it. That's like, oh, that's tempo. There we go. Awesome. Then, then his profile, and yeah. So this was first full body shot. That's better. He's got a kind of a decent chassis, but still a little bit hulky. A little bit big. Yeah. There you go. Love seeing that. Love seeing the behind the scenes stuff or the creative process. Thanks, man. 
Yeah, a lot of people, that's something I try to teach my students too. Like when you see a finished product, there's so many other sketches that happened before that, that lead to that final thing. So, yeah, I don't think cool. any designer, there's no easy way around it. You have to work and you have yep. to have good fundamentals, you know, try to put in the time. I've been breaking my fundamentals. <laughs> no, you're working it, bro. You're working it. Sometimes I just hit it full steam ahead and just let it happen, right? So I've definitely been using that sort of technique, especially even with Thaddeus's book, you know, where there hasn't been a lot of thinking involved with the characters, just kind of drawing them and let them take form. Yeah. So although taking the time and working through some of the ideas and stuff like that, but like, Right now, I don't really feel like time has been much of a luxury, so <clears throat> I just got to get it out there and keep on pushing and moving forward, right? And like I said to Bob, like, my next page, you know, is my best page kind of thing, you know? I'm just as good as my next page. I think that's how I put it. <laughs> you're only as good as your last page, but you're trying to be as good as your next one? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> I just came up with that. I'm, I'm so brilliant. Well, it's kind of like the way it is, right? And then you, when you take time to reflect or look back at your progression, that's when you find like some nuances in the work that you've done, right? Bob, that chameleon is amazing. Jeez, bro. Thanks. Did you use reference for that? Or did you just get used um, to drawing? I think I did. Yeah, yeah, I did when I started. Like, I did a bunch of, like, study sketches, like, uh, kind of like you did, not as extensive. Um, and I just put them on, like, a derpy body here. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Yeah, yeah the derpiness the is, like, part of, you got to make it derpy, you know? Yeah. Not everything has, should be cool, right? No, exactly. The henchman kind of character. Yeah. It's definitely yeah. rocking his inner golem. Yeah, yeah, for sure. There's nothing going by with this guy. That's right. He's looking for his ring. <laughs> oh, that's pretty yeah. wicked. All right, guys. I'm going to call it. All right. Cool. We, we're, at, we're almost at two and a half hours. Jesus. Not bad. Well, we normally were going for three hours these days. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah. Well, thank you, Jonesy. We will connect very shortly and then we'll let Bob know as to what's going on with the, the life drawing, live stream, life drawing stuff. Yeah, yeah let's do it, man. I'd love to join those. That would keep me honest too, like doing, actually doing it. <laughs> for sure. Right? It's like a running totally. group, except for artists. Yeah, let's do it. What do, what do you say, 11 o'clock? I'm going to go for 11 or 12 tomorrow? In the morning? I have a meeting at 11. But... I can always join late if I'm able to. I've also got a prep too. Look at me, I'm already with excuses. <laughs> Moved online though is really cramping my style here. You gotta enjoy it. You gotta enjoy what you're doing. Hey, you oh know, yeah, if you yeah. guys uh, send me an invite, I will do my best to join. Sounds right. good. So this That's is happening cool. tomorrow? Nice stride. <laughs> yeah, we've been live streaming like every day. For you guys are pretty yeah, I'll be, I got a doctor's appointment in the morning, but I should be home by 11. So. Cool. Well, message me. Let me know. I'm looking forward to it. Sounds good, man. All right. Have a good night, guys. Yeah, you too. Take yeah. it easy, Alan. Peace. Later. Yeah, there's uh here, I was going to show you this. This is the thing that I did, man. Like the, ooh. where's the picture? Where's the oh, is this the stuff you did, the life drawing stuff? Yeah, this was, oh man, I don't even know these camera angles yet. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, this stuff here, here, let me minimize the screen. But this is where, basically I started out in the upper hand corner, like in this side. Yeah. And then worked across. But I think too, like I just got to start working a little bit more on my form as well. And uh, then I started getting into like more of like a tonal uh, study. 
Yeah, you can see the progression there. And then just How long were these sketches? Two minutes. Two minutes, yeah. Yeah, all these things are two minutes. And then just trying to work into... But the total stuff, yeah, was just... Yeah, just quick identification, right? So... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was just having fun. And then... Uh, like you saw what Liam was drawn for those two, right? Yeah. Uh, oops. I'm in the wrong thing. File. Open recently. It would be three. And like the longer pose that we did, this was my longer pose. Very cool. <clears throat> like a little bit more kind of like avatar -y or whatever. And more like... To def definitely just more painterly right but i love the bone structure there you've got like the ribs and yeah that's cool i'm trying to just map out and and uh yeah just play around with it a little bit i'd like to introduce more like life painting into my final kind of work and stuff that i do mm -hmm. uh, yeah just to mix it up right diversify those figure sketches, man, those are essential to what like we're doing with the comics. Like that's the fundamental part about comics right there is those those getting those the sense of movement and everything like that from the, the figures. And I think too with um I I've noticed too in, in the recent panels or some of the latest panels that I've done that I'm really starting to get a little bit more dynamic with the the panels themselves uh just for movement and that like this one like you know just a little bit more dynamics with the movement as he's taking yeah. off I like how he's popping out of the frame there too that's always fun yeah yeah i wanted to do, and like the kirby did that a lot right where he you know characters were always popping out and stuff so um yeah, and just with the, some of the smaller panels, like I'm still not sure like what kind of pen sizes and nibs I should be using, but I'm starting to become a little bit more familiar with using finer, finer nibs because I don't go into the pages that much. Like, uh, still I'm being really apprehensive as to how I approach it. Mm -hmm. uh, Cause usually I go, okay, print size, that that's the size you're going to be seeing the panel, you know, in, in, in the finished look or whatever. Right. So I'm like, oh, I'll keep it within what logically looks to me like, you know, it needs to be at. So. Yeah. It takes, it takes a while, right. To find that kind of sweet spot where you, like for me, I used to use this particular pen on this like inking, but I experimented a little bit because you just need something expressive, right? That works with your style too. Like even like as a right-handed person, right? Like things like that come into account. But. Yeah, I changed, uh, I changed the nib that I used from this page to this page though. Like, and then the nibs that I started to use I think the line weight's actually starting to be affected a little bit more. Yeah. It's starting to look a little bit more polished now. So, yeah, I'm just, yeah, just taking each panel at a time. Yeah, that's why it's important to kind of experiment to, to a point, right? Oh, yeah. Like, this is me drawing pencil. Like, this is my my digital pencil right here. Oh, that looks awesome. Yeah. <clears throat> and But this is being more like, say, like a David Finch kind of style, right? Or those types of styles. <laughs> Man, that looks awesome. Look at that detail. Yeah. I definitely went in and I created like a, a digital pencil and stuff. So. Yeah, I like the hatching work you got going on there. And that's one of the biological characters, right? This dude. So. Oh, then we got another. Oh, it's a knight as well. All right, take it easy, Dar. I think he, he pieced out too. 
Yeah, that's cool. I think I might head out too, to be honest. I gotta get ready for <laughs> he's still here. He's like, Wow, that's amazing. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> right so. on. Yeah, thanks a lot. I really appreciate it. We should connect at some point in time. Like we just haven't been able to connect with everything going on, right? Even for you know, just regular stuff, but yeah. Yeah, right. for sure, man. Yeah, I'm glad yeah, you, you got your slab. You haven't sent me a picture yet. <laughs> no, am I am I safe to post it now? Everyone's got theirs. Yeah, go for it. Okay. That's fine. Mike knows about it. James is uh I don't I'm not sure if Daryl's delivered it to James yet or if uh if uh James is back in town yet, so but soon enough. Okay, cool. <clears throat> I'm just kind of scrubbing through stuff going, who, what, what have I done in the last little bit? <laughs> but no, I really appreciate it. Um, it will be nice to, uh, yeah, just connect one, one time over a drawing stream and that. And yeah, well, hopefully tomorrow works out. Like I got a, definitely got a prep for school, but 11 o'clock that would put me right near about lunchtime. So Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'll be probably a little bit later than that, but we'll, we'll, we'll get her figured yeah. out. But I'll, I'll try my best. I really would love to join the, the light drawing thing with you guys. That would be really cool. Yeah, I'm going to be in Woodstock in the morning, so. Oh, so it might be later than that? For a doctor's appointment. No, I think the yeah. kids have another dentist appointment or whatever, but that's a bit later. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing yeah, like the, just me the, uh, the invite for it, and if I could join, I'll join for sure, even if it's late. Yeah, sounds good, man. All right, well, thanks for having me on. Yeah, for sure, and I hope everybody enjoyed uh, just watching us talk, ramble, and just real life <laughs> stuff. <laughs> yeah, hanging out with us, right? Yeah, basically hanging out with us. Yeah. So, all right, take it easy, Bob. Thanks, man. Yep. Thanks. Yep.